Last season, the Angels brought their first World Series championship home to Anaheim, turning a 42-year-old dream into reality. Here comes 0-2. He got him. Pizio hits one into deep right field. And the Anaheim Angels have come all the way back and lead it 6 5. Rent right field and into the corner. Here's Salmon. Says he has it. The Angels, world champions. Now they're back with a new dream for a new season. The goal to successfully defend the championship. Angels baseball is next. Tempe Diablo Stadium in Tempe, Arizona for Cactus League Baseball on KCAL 9. Today, we are proud to bring you the world champion Anaheim Angels hosting the Chicago Cubs. It's a sellout in Tempe as Southern California fans take a spring vacation to check out their world champions. Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Fiziak. After four and a half months, it is still wonderful to say the world champion Anaheim Angels. We will again have Angels baseball on KCAL 9 this year, including two spring training games today in Tempe and then on March 29th against the Dodgers at Edison Field. And when you play spring training and broadcast those games, you can do some fun things. And Rex Hudler will be down in the dugout talking with Mike Socio. We'll have Jared Washburn and David Eckstein up in the booth. But again, the theme is after 42 years, the Angels are the world champions. And no Angel is more proud and happy happy about that than the Angels right fielder Tim Salmon. After 10 seasons, Tim Salmon finally experienced postseason baseball in 2002. And on the game's greatest stage, Kingfish rose to the occasion in the eighth inning of Game 2 of the World Series. Salmon broke a 9-9 tie with his second two-run home run of the game, putting the Angels up for good and giving the franchise its first World Series win. The Angels right fielder Salmon is with my partner, Rex Hudler. Thanks, Fizz. I'm down here with the Kingfish himself. Timmy, can you take us back to October a little bit? I mean, <laughs> a lot of us fans are still a little bit in disbelief. Can you take us back, please? I tell you what, I mean, it, about two or three weeks after the series, I was still dreaming that we had to get up and play Game 7. So, I mean, it took a while for me to kind of let it all sink in. But you know what? It's, it's been awesome, and uh, it's, it's been a different spring, no doubt. I mean, you know, a lot more excited coming into camp, and uh, you know that series is still fresh on your mind. Makes you makes you hungry. No doubt about that. How about coming into spring? You mentioned um, is is there a different focus this year? Or is it going to be the same day to day approach? Or what is the uh, the job for you guys and your mental focus for this spring? Well, I think different than any other time in my career. I mean, you actually know you know what what you want to accomplish at the end of the year now, and you know what it takes to get there. Um, but I think if anything, we know that that was a hard long road, and. Um, I think we, you know, are going into it thinking that it's going to be even tougher. So, you know, from that standpoint, you know, you're coming here trying to get your work done, um, you know, get yourself ready. Guys have had some injuries. We got a month shorter now to get healthy. So, um, you know, that's been a little bit of an issue. But, um, you know, I think for the most part, we recognize that we got to work just as hard or harder, you know, to get it to make it happen again. And so now coming into this season, we have an opportunity uh, to uh, 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 pedal to the metal. Is there a different focus for this this coming season for the team? Well, I think, you know, anytime you've had success doing it, you know, a certain way, you know, you try to replicate that and do it the same way again. And um, I think that's one thing that Social has been talking about is, hey, let's not change anything. Let's go out there and do the same things we did last year in spring to get ourselves ready. And, um, you know, you don't, you don't change the formula for success. If that's what's brought you success, you stay with it. 
fish, uh, can, can we do an upstream for the people or not? Do you know? <laughs> All right. One time, one time. Right. Upstream, Timmy Salmon. Back to you, Steve. That's the first time the Kingfish has ever done that with the Wonder Dog. It is fabulous, and Rex will be everywhere. In the Angels' dugout with Mike Sosha, he'll be talking with Jared Washburn about the proper way to cover first bases on ground balls. And he'll be checking out Chris Buchek, who's the Angels' starting pitcher and former first-round draft choice. There he is, the big right-hander from Auburn University. It's Buchek against the Chicago Cubs. It's the Angels, the world champions from 2002, Next on KCAL 9. There's a big advantage to being the Southland's largest television news team. It's what's actually fueling the fire. When important stories break, no one brings it to you faster than CBS 2 News and KCAL 9 News. First on the scene. It collided with a truck that was trying to cross. First to uncover the important details. 35 power poles went down. First with information to keep your family safe. CBS 2 News, KCAL 9 News. First when you need to know. Hi, I'm Jared Washburn with the Anaheim Angels. This summer, we're looking for every advantage we can get as the action heats up on the field. But off the field, we want to stay cool, save energy, and save money. And you can too. Here's how. Replace light bulbs with compact fluorescents, weather strip around windows and doors, and clean your air conditioner filters regularly. Remember, energy conservation is always in season. A message from the Anaheim Angels and Southern California Edison. Around here, there's only one style. One attitude, one California, and one exclusive California truck, the Dodge Ram Bighorn Edition. It's loaded with four big doors, available 20-inch wheels, CD stereo, power windows, keyless entry, air, and much more. Plus Dodge's 7-year or 70,000-mile powertrain limited warranty. Grab the California Bighorn Ram now with either a $2,500 cash allowance or 0% financing. Only at California's Truck Stop, your nearby California Dodge dealer. <laughs> I'm a delicious chili dog. Oh, 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 oh. Everybody uh, wants to eat me. Ah, oh no! See how easy it is to spot an imposter? Well, that's what other chili is. So if it's chili you want, go with the original chili that started the craze. Our chili is made fresh every day. And right now you can get a chili cheeseburger, chili cheese dog, and chili cheese fries for just $3. That's all three for three bucks. Only at Wiener Schnitzel, home of the original chili. And still the best. Monday, the Lakers take on the Clippers for the final crosstown shootout of a season. And the stakes have never been high. For the Lakers, a chance to move up the standards. And for the Clippers, last chance for bragging rights. Lakers, Clippers, Monday at 7 on Kick Out Live. Welcome back to Tempe Diablo Stadium. It is the Chicago Cubs and the Anaheim Angels. The Cubs this spring training with a record of 7, 8, and 3. The Angels are 5, 11, and 1. Chris Buchek just threw his first pitch, and Bobby Hill, the second baseman, sent a weak ground ball back to Chris, and Chris threw him out. So one down to start this ball game. Buchek is the big, tall right-hander from LaPorte, Indiana, out of Auburn University, former first-round draft pick. It, just a couple of years ago and he has a good fastball and he can work both sides of the plate but this is one of the bright young pitchers the Angels have in their organization Rex. Yes the young man's got a two seam fastball slider and a changeup. Ground ball hit by Alex Gonzalez to Troy Gloss who has the best arm of any third baseman in the game and he guns him down. Let's take a look at the Cubs batting order brought to you by your Southern California Ford dealers. Bobby Hill grounded out. So did Alex Gonzalez. Sammy Sosa, Moises Alou, Hesop Choi, Eric Karras, Corey Patterson, Mark Bellhorn, and Damian Miller. They had Sammy Sosa in there earlier. Then they knocked him out. Now he's back in the lineup. Hitting 294 this spring training. One of the great home run hitters in the game. Hit 49 last year. Led the National League in both home runs and runs scored. But they really wanted to get him some protection, and that's why they hope a healthy Moises Alou and Hesop Choi, the talented rookie from Korea, will help out Sammy to see more pitches. And there's a ground ball hit to David Eckstein. Well, you've got to like Blue Check Sinker. It's working. Three ground balls and three outs. We'll be right back.
Well, I had a really nice time tonight. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess it's getting late. Yeah, yeah, it's getting late. Yeah, it's getting so dark. <laughs> See ya. Call me. Uh, they did a great job pitching to me during the series. That situation, they had nowhere to put me, so he had to come to me. Here's the pitch to him. A line drive down the right. Yeah, I got the game-winning hit, but we got the lead. Here's the pitch to Lofton. Everything went quiet, and he just waited for the ball to be caught. Erskine makes the catch! The Anaheim Angels are the champions of baseball! March is Big Spin Madness Month. Lucky players could walk away multi-million dollar winners. It's Money Madness on the next Big Spin. Today at 5 on KCAL Live. Adam Massengale, KCAL 9, Sports Central at 1045. World Champion Angels Baseball on KCAL 9 is brought to you by your Southern California Ford dealers. See your Ford dealer today. By Carl's Jr. for the great taste of charbroiled burgers. The name of the game is Carl's Jr. By Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. By Southern California Edison, who reminds you that energy conservation is always in season. Buy Toyota. Get a great lease or low financing on any new 03 Toyota. See your Toyota dealer today. Get the feeling Toyota. And buy Wiener Schnitzel, the official hot dog of the Anaheim Angels. For Anaheim. Steve Fiziok, Rex Hudler with you. Speaking of hot dogs, I'm with the Wonder Dog. And let's take a look at the Angels batting order brought to you by your Four Southern California to Sin City Four dealers. Dealers. See your David Eckstein will lead things off, play shortstop, then Darren Erstad, Tim Salmon, Garrett Anderson, Troy Gloss, Brad Fulmer, Scott Spezio, Benji Molina, and Adam Kennedy. Probably the lineup you'll see on opening day against the Texas Rangers. Two weeks from Sunday. It's coming fast. Yep. We're talking to Mike before the game, we said, hey, Mike, is, is this going to be your opening day lineup? And he looked and paused a second and said, yes, barring any unforeseen problems, this is it. Well, that was one of the reasons for the success last year, winning 99 games, winning the World Series. Health must stay healthy. And here is the pitcher, Mark Guthrie. Came over from the New York Wet Mets where he won five games in relief starting this one. And next time with a smash to the third baseman, but Mark Bellhorn will throw out David. Nice to see the X Factor hauling down the line. This guy made so many people proud, and I mean, including myself, as I was moved to name my last child David. Now, my wife wouldn't let me say, call him David X Hudler. She wouldn't let me go with X, because X and Rex is too close, she said. Let's stay with David. Yes, because when he's late to dinner, you want to be able to say X, and he, and then you come in. <laughs> Here's right. Darren Erstad. That's Ooh. right. We welcomed another wonder pup to the Hudler family in January. Your wife, Jennifer, is unbelievable. She has five children now. Including me? Yes. <laughs> Erstad fouls it off. Mark Guthrie, he, he's a 13-year Major League veteran. I faced him when I played. Heck, he's rolling along. He's the kind of guy at this stage in his career is not going to overpower you, but he's got the good movement on the fastball, a little sinkage, a little curveball. You can see the number of teams he played for, but you've got to tip your hat to a guy like this who's persevered and worked hard, and he's vying for a spot. Kerry Wood was supposed to start today, but he got scratched. Guthrie took the ball. And Erstad having a solid spring, hitting 412. Again, he's coming off that hamate surgery at the end of the World Series. Actually, it was game four that he was experiencing pain, and he played the rest of the way, and he thought it was just some soreness. There's a chopper off the middle, and it's a base hit for Erstad. But Erstad, after two weeks, he said, I better get this checked out, and found out he had broke, broken the hook of the hamate bone. And that's why he was late coming around with his swings. People might say, what's he talking about? Hook, handmade bone. Well, that's the bone on the hand right there underneath the meat. Uh, you know, right in, in what happens is it's a little hook bone. And when the batter swings, the knob of the bat 
usually brushes up against that. And sometimes a hitter will have problems with that handmade bone. A little surgery to correct it. And here comes the Kingfish. Some strong hands here in Tim Salmon hitting 286 with a home run this spring and he takes a breaking ball in there. You were a right hander. Tim Salmon's a right hander. What's he going to see from Mark Guthrie? Well first pitch curveball. They know that in spring training the hitters timing's going to be off a little bit and they're looking for fastballs hitters are. So Guthrie he's saying I'll start him with a curveball and maybe he'll come back with another one. Because after they throw the first one for a strike lots of times they'll double up with it. Look at that young rookie at first base. He Sop Choi, six feet four, 230 pounds from Korea. They he's, say he can really hit the ball a long way. He's huge. I was walking down there. He's a he's a big kid. Erstad with good speed and Salmon chops one to the shortstop. Darren goes in hard at second base, but Tim is taken out and it is a double play to end the first inning for the Angels. Erstad plays hard all the time. And the Angels are through one with the Cubs scoreless. Get the best values in America from Dodge. Take our best products like Dodge Ram Heavy Duty, the 250 horsepower Intrepid SXT, the best selling minivan ever, and the VA powered Durango. Plus our best warranty, Dodge's fully transferable 770 powertrain limited warranty. Plus our best deals, like up to a $4,500 cash allowance or 0% financing on most models. Add it all up, and it equals the best values in America. See your Dodge dealer or visit Dodge.com. Don't know why you left me out alone. In the dark and lost inside my home. But I'm looking for the answer. Trying to find my way back to you. The guacamole bacon six dollar burger. New at Carl's Jr. Now fly Southwest Airlines from the LA area to Oakland or Phoenix for just $29 each way. So get packing. You are now free to move about the country. Angels baseball on KCAL 9. Top of the second inning we go. The Chicago Cubs and Anaheim Angels. Steve Fiziak, Rex Hudler. We are joined by the very proud general manager of the Angels. That is Bill Stoneman. Bill, it has been a short off season, but you're glad it went that way. Oh, I'll take another one and many, many more. Uh, but we were a month short, which is great. I, you know, this has been fun. This has been fun. We just were congratulated everywhere we go, and the players all want to do it again. Oh, no question. And you were an excellent pitcher in the major leagues through two no hitters. Here's a young man, Chris Buchek, who's six feet five inches tall. Tell us about he, uh, Chris, and his talents. Uh, Boots, a pitcher in the true sense of the word, uh, locates his fastball well, uh, throws a bit of a slider, has a little curveball, and has a very good changeup. Uh, good idea about how to pitch. Not overpowering, but he, he places his fastball in the right spot in the zone, and uh, that's, you know, that's how a lot of guys make it to the major leagues and stay there a long time. He said he wanted more movement on his fastball working on the two seamer. It must have been effective in that first inning with three ground ball outs. Well, that's what the two seamer gets you is ground balls, and, uh, and he has been working hard to make it move a little more. There is a line drive that Eckstein spears, and that is four straight for Chris Buchek. So, Bill, is this pretty much going to be Mike's opening day lineup, uh, barring any, any uh, problems that they could have? Well, yeah. <laughs> You're gonna have to ask Mike that. I, you know, I uh, I stay out of that picture, but uh, it looks pretty much like uh, what I expect Mike's gonna do. How about David Eckstein? Does he does he get any larger in your eyes when you see him play? <laughs> now his third year at shortstop. Uh, what a terrific player and terrific person. Uh, just dedicated to doing things the right way, both on and off the field. Uh, you know, really, really the type of person that people ought to model themselves after and their kids after two springs ago he was like a, a, a throw in player when Kennedy broke his finger and you put, they put him in the lineup and I remember we watched him and he just hustled everywhere and he opened some eyes. Well he sure did and uh, you know he got a little crack in the door for him and he walked through it and 
you know, he hasn't walked the other way out the door yet. You know. And those are the guys you want to have on your team, those character guys who young players can model themselves after because nobody works harder at preparing themselves for the game than David Eckstein and Darren Erstad and Tim Salmon, people like that. Well, they do. And, you know, it's for me, uh, really it's a proud thing for me to be involved with people like that because you they set an example for people uh, in the area and really all over the world they uh, they do live their lives the way you want to live. a drive in the gap that Erstad cuts off his fire to second base is not in time it will be a double for he sop Choi. we really are talking great things about this young man he has been their top prospect and the hitting prospect in the organization for a couple of years well, he has, and uh, he can really hit the ball a long way. He didn't, uh, I mean, he got that ball quite far out to left center field. He can hit it a lot further than that. I've seen it. Uh, he was in the Arizona Fall League a couple years ago, just launching rockets, and uh, he's going to be a good one. Bill, it had to make you feel a lot better that soon after the World Series was over, uh, Disney said we were going to increase the payroll to keep the players here. That had to be a big sigh of relief for you. And second question would be, did you feel like you had to make any extra moves, help them any more by getting any more players? Well, we our objective was to keep the club together if we could, and uh, you know, and we uh, felt we could move the revenues up, and that would allow us to keep the players together and do something that really isn't done much in modern day baseball, and that is having same team uh, come back that was here the year before. You don't see that a lot in baseball now, and a lot of that's economic, and that's the way that. Uh, uh, that things used to be back. I know when I played, uh, teams were stable and fans loved that. So I think the fans are going to like the fact that we kept the club together. I know it's been talked about a lot in the past. You were the guy who chose Mike Socha as your manager, and obviously it's worked out beautifully. What did you see in him? Because he had no major league managerial experience before you selected him to man the Angels post. Well, he, he, he was such a competitor as a player. Uh, his communication skills came out, uh, came out very clearly in the interview. And actually, I had two interviews with Mike, and very good communicator, very dedicated, knows the game. Just, you know, there wasn't a weakness that, uh, that I saw. And, uh, you know, it's kind of panned out that way. I, you know, I, who would you rather have as a manager, you know, if you had your pick of anybody? And I, for me, it was Mike Sosha then, and it's Mike Sosha now, and for a long time. Paul. You know, I, I was blessed, Bill, like you were, to, to play the game a long time, and I get to play for a lot of good managers. And I played for Joe Torrey and Whitey Herzog. Eric Carroll, he's, he's got to go, Fizz. Yes, he does. A call strike three from Chris Buchek. Talk about this, Bill. Well, the pitch, uh, Karras thought it was a little bit low, but uh, that ball looked to me to be right on the knees, and uh, that was a strike. But I was saying, uh, he has the qualities. I've known Mike since he's been managing for three years now. He has the qualities of a great manager. So I think it's safe to say Mike Sosha is a young, great manager. You agree with me? Oh, I think he's, he's, he's better than great for me. I, you know, the, the way we work together and the way he works with other people and, and the players, I mean, it's just, it's terrific. You know, it's interesting. I was talking to Sparky Anderson, who's going to be he's in the Hall of Fame as a manager, went to the World Series five times, and he said, Steve, if Mike is there five years, he's going to be a great one because he said, that's what it takes. He said, sometimes you have to withstand what, what goes on in Major League Baseball on the field, off the little ups and downs of a season. And talking with him in the past season, Sparky said, he's there, he's there. Well, you know, he's, he's experienced ups and downs as a player and, uh, and then as a coach also. Uh, so he knows about that. He knows that patience pays off. Bill, why we why we still have you? Could you could you give us some insight on some of your good-looking young players? Maybe the Angel fans are looking to, for up and coming. Well, uh, I mean, we've we've moved some of them to the minor leagues. Uh, early early guys to be sent out uh, are going to be real good ones. Casey Koshman's one uh, was our top draft uh, about a year and a half, almost two years ago now, and uh, he's had a couple of little injuries nagging uh, him in his first couple of seasons. But he's really going to be a good one. At first base, uh, Jeff Mathis, uh, catcher, is really going to be. What about that one. guy? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> isn't he he's a, still a rookie? Isn't he a ten-year veteran? <laughs> K Rod, he's got more nicknames than I did. Heck, he's not even played a full year in the big leagues yet. Well, he's a special talent and uh, really a good player and a, and a focused player. And he, he he joined us, and people say, well, 
you know, how could a guy with 15 days experience in the major leagues do so well in the postseason? It's not just the talent that he has in his right arm. It's the focus that he has mentally, and he can really focus on his job, and that's uh, what really all of our guys did last year. It had a lot to do with, with our success. And I asked Mike about that with the challenges that Venezuela had as a country where Francisco could not pitch in the offseason. I, I wonder if they were concerned about what kind of shape he was in because he said he had to stay in because of the internal strife in his city. But they said he came in great shape. And Mike said his work habits have been awesome. And Chris Buchek strikes out two in the inning. We'll come back more with Bill Stoneman after this. Nationwide Spring Sales Event, where value begins with an all-star lineup of quality Toyota cars. Get $750 cash back on an 03 Corolla. There's also $750 back on the versatile 03 Matrix and $750 back on the restyled 03 Echo. Yes, get legendary Toyota quality, great fuel economy, and cash back. Get to Toyota's Nationwide Spring Sales Event, where value begins with quality. Get the show on. There's something happening at Craig and Auto Parts. New items at great prices. We're stocking up like never before with tools, automotive chemicals, the accessories you want, and the parts you need. And if you find it lower somewhere else, Craig and will beat their price by 5%. Guaranteed. Craig and the power of the star. Get a case of Valvoline motor oil for only 89 cents a quart after rebate with coupon and this 18-volt cordless drill kit for only $29.99. Around here, there's only one style. One attitude, one California, and one exclusive California truck. The Dodge Ram Bighorn Edition. It's loaded with four big doors, available 20-inch wheels, CD stereo, power windows, keyless entry, air, and much more. Plus Dodge's seven-year or 70,000-mile powertrain limited warranty. Grab the California Bighorn Ram now with either a $2,500 cash allowance or 0% financing. Only at California's Truck Stop, your nearby California Dodge dealer. <laughs> World Champion Angels Baseball on KCAL 9 is brought to you by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. Welcome back to Tempe Diablo Stadium. Steve Fiziok, Rex Hudler, and Angels General Manager Bill Stoneman. And there is Bill. Bill. The consistency of the organization. I mean, 23 of the 25 players who suited up for the World Series reported to spring training. You like that consistency and also bringing the guys up through the organization rather than go out and trades which other organizations might seem comfortable with. Well really building from within is the, the only way to be successful. Uh, you've got to do it and you've got to do it well. And, uh, we've been fortunate. Uh, we've brought some good players through and uh, a lot of good ones were here before I got here. Well here's one of them who came through the organization and Garrett Anderson. And Garrett pops up to the second baseman. We have a new pitcher for the Chicago Cubs and that will be a former Atlanta Brave Mike Remlinger. This is one of the top left handers in the game last year. Look at that a sparkling 1.99 ERA. Hey the Cubs are better. Oh yeah they've they've helped themselves and, and they've got some really really good young pitching coming along. I mean really good. They're going to be a factor in, in the National League uh, very quickly. Kerry Wood and University of Southern California Trojan Mark Pryor. Well, there are uh, there are more than just those guys. <laughs> you know, we saw a guy named Guzman when we played over at Mesa earlier against the Cubbies this uh, this spring, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, uh, there's a guy named Cruz coming up. A couple of Latin guys, and boy, do they have good arms. You know, and it, it's uh, it's really interesting. They've done a good job in the minor leagues. And, and Jimmy Hendry's now their GM uh, became their GM. What about mid-season or so last year? And uh, you know, he really understands player development and signing players too. Well, here's a young man, Troy Gloss, who really came on in the playoffs and World Series. Oh, did he ever? I, you know, he finished off the season great and then carried it right into the postseason. And uh, you know, I mean, all our guys stepped up in the postseason, but uh, Troy was a really a key guy for us and hit some big home runs and some big base hits for us. Uh, had a huge hit, and uh, obviously in Game Six. Uh, to put us ahead in that game and uh, big player for us. How about that guy? In my opinion, 
Ross hits it right on the nose to center field for the Angels' second base hit of the game. I think he was, Adam Kennedy was the most improved player last year, Bill, on the whole team. What did you think about it? Well, defensively to offensively? Yeah, without question. Uh, I mean, Adam really, really stood out defensively last year and, and, uh, and hit over 300 and had three huge home runs against the Twins. How about that? He's in, he's in company with Babe Ruth and Reggie Jackson. <laughs> yeah, that's neat. And, and, you know, it's nice to have it happen to a guy like Adam. Uh, such a dedicated baseball guy. George Brett. Look at those names. Now Sean Wooten. Brad Fulmer got the start, but he was a late scratch, and Wooten comes on. The left-hander Guthrie. They had Fulmer in there earlier, and that was because Kerry Wood, a right-hander, was scheduled to start. But when Dusty Baker opted to go with the left-hander Guthrie, Soch made the switch to Sean Wooten. Come on, Brad. Dusty Baker, of course, the new skipper in Chicago. We faced him with the San Francisco Giants last year as the Angels and Giants got together in the World Series. And Dusty, I mean, when he came to Chicago, there was so much enthusiasm in the media, the fan support. When he met the fans, he said, my name is Dusty. It is not Messiah. And <laughs> he was saying, the players win the games. But he's a very good manager and has an unusual ability to communicate with his team. Well, that's, I mean, that's such a key attribute of a good manager. And, you know, Dusty has it, Mike has it, and, and also what you just said about Dusty talking about that the players win the games. I mean, that's a, a perspective that a good manager and all the good managers have that perspective. They know who goes out on the field and, and does the work, and they just direct it. Fizz, when I came home from Japan in, in 94 to start the season, I signed with the San Francisco Giants and Dusty Baker, and I loved him. I thought he was a fantastic guy. Busy. He hung out with us. He stretched with us. He had his toothpick in his mouth, and he was really had a way to relax the players because he was one himself, a very likable manager. Then they found me out after 30 days. They let me go, and that's how I became an angel. And the funny story about that is, Bill, is that Rex went in and thanked Dusty Baker for the opportunity, and the, he really appreciated it. And Dusty said he felt so terrible that he said, I wish he came in, here, in there and yelled at me. And it was so funny to hear Dusty talk about that moment. That was, you, it, it, you know, when you get called into the manager's office, Bill, you can, you remember as a player, yep. you got a little nervous, you got a little tight, and you never know what news they're going to give you. You're right, yeah, and you're always expecting that it's going to be bad news. Gloss goes, and the pitch low, and Wooten is on. But that's what the game revolves around, quality people. And it's such a small fraternity, this game of baseball. And when you're in front office management, well, your name and your reputation gets gets around and, and you you develop that by your playing days and now your coaching days a lot like Sosha and Dusty Baker they're a lot alike yeah they, they are very much alike and have, both have such a great perspective on the game well when we talk about dramatic moments in World Series history this guy Scott Spezio in game six provided the Angels with an unbelievable moment he was batting from the left side in game six with the Angels down Five nothing and hit a three run home run on an eight pitch at bat against Felix Rodriguez and sometimes you have to tip your cap because Felix was throwing good pitch after good pitch. He was and, and Spees was, was spoiling his good pitches and then got one that uh, that he hit just a mile in the air and a tremendous hang time and that ball I think it's still up there. <laughs> you know <laughs> it just had tremendous hang time and then went far enough to get us back in the game. But it seems like all sports are about opportunities and last year Scott Spezio received an opportunity when Sean Wooten hurt himself chasing a foul ball down the right field line and Spezio was given the everyday job and did he come through beautifully. Well he did. Uh, you know, tremendous glove man at first base. We're a little disappointed disappointed that he wasn't the, the gold glove first baseman but uh, you know he may be this year and uh, you know, what a what a tremendous baseball guy again comes from a baseball family. Uh, Ed, uh, Eddie Spezio is Scott's dad. Eddie played uh, back in the time that I played, and, and we know each other well, and, and he's a good guy. And his dad also won a World Series. Absolutely. Spezio with a base hit to left field. Gloss will turn and hold. Now, he had a chance to come home, but Ron Renicki did not pick up the outfielder, dropping the baseball until it was past him. He had already held Gloss at third. Base is loaded with one out. 
The knock on Spezio was last year coming in was he couldn't hit right-handed. Well, he answered his critics nicely, just like that nice, lousy single. It almost drove in a run right there. He responded by hitting over 350 right-handed. That's amazing. Well, he just, yeah, he turned his whole right-handed season around from the year before and had a terrific year right-handed. You know, that, that comes with practice and focus. It, it really goes to show you that practice pays off, and he worked at it. Some players have the ability to rise to the occasion. And how about your gold glove catcher here? Well, he's another one. What a player. I and mean, what an arm. He, he can throw you out when you're trying to steal. They will get Molina at first base, but that is all as Troy Gloss comes home from third base. And it is situational hitting. I remember when Mickey Hatcher got together with Mike Sosha last spring training and they said, let's advance the runners. And everybody bought in. Even the, the big sluggers like Gloss and Tim Salmon, all they cared about was team baseball. And Mickey said, even advancing runners on outs improved. And sacrifices improved. Hitting behind runners. What well, did? Uh, we really made it a point of focus. Because uh, we knew we hadn't done a very good job on that in 2001. So we wanted to change all that, and it worked. Here is Adam Kennedy with a drive to right field. Sammy Sosa goes back under it and makes the catch. So the inning ends. The Angels score a run and take a 1 0 lead. Well, Stoneman, thank you very much for joining us in the booth. Because thank you, Rex. Thanks very much. Have a great year, Bill. All right, Bill Stoneman, the Angels general manager, the world champion general manager. We'll be right back. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Sierra Mist. Taste one shockingly refreshing lemon lime. I gotta get me a dog like that. Hi, I'm Benji Molina with the Anaheim Angels. This season, my teammates and I are putting all our energy out on the field. But off the field, we're doing our best to save energy. And here's what you can do to help conserve. Turn off lights and appliances when you're not using them. Keep your air conditioner at 78 degrees or use a fan instead. Remember, energy conservation is always in season. A message from the Anaheim Angels and Southern California Edison. Hey! That thing got a Hemi, right? Yeah! Well, now I got a Hemi, too! But I got something you don't got! Check this out! Dodge Ram 1500. Hemi legend continues. Grab a Hemi and our 770 powertrain limited warranty plus 0% financing or $2,500 cash allowance. See our California Dodge dealer. The Angels with a 1-0 lead over the Chicago Cubs. Steve Fiziak, Rex Hudler. We are joined in the broadcast booth by the Angels' terrific left-hander, Jared Washburn, who won 18 games last year. Jared's from Webster, Wisconsin. What was it like going home with a world title? I was tired, but it was, it was a lot better than going home uh, previous years. So it was uh, uh, about a month less of hunting season. So uh, that's not good, but there's nothing I'd... Uh, Rather miss hunting season four. Well, you're leading me right into my question yes. now. Was was there any extra satisfaction while you were sitting in that blind up in a tree or wherever you sit for all that peace and quiet? Did you feel pretty good about yourself? How could you not? After a year like last year, how could you not feel great? And here's what's interesting. A shorter hunting season, and you set a record <laughs> bagging deer. Yeah. I got a few, few extra opportunities with winning the World Series and Got to be on a couple of hunting shows, and, and so it was, it was a lot of fun. Your record, your new record is 11. 11 For those yeah. of you in Southern California who are listening, I'm from Kansas, you're from Wisconsin. The greatest environmentalists are hunters because they're the ones who care about the environment the most. Yes, we do. Take care of the woods. Wash, what do you think about some of these young pitchers uh, that you're seeing here, like this Buchek kid we've been reading about? A lot of guys, a lot of guys working hard, working their way up through the minor leagues and pushing us. So uh, we get to stay on our toes. Guys like Buchek and, and some of these other younger guys coming up, they're, they're here to try to steal our jobs, and, and they look pretty good. 
Wash, when the Angel pitchers were warming up down the right field line, Chris was watching. He was resting because he knew he was going to start. But when everybody ended, he went over to talk to you. What were you guys visiting about? Uh, I don't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> You're so honest. I thought you'd make something up. He's not, we were talking he's not like me, Fizz. He, he didn't make stuff up like I did. But he had a very serious expression in his face, like he was soaking in all of your wisdom that you were passing on. <laughs> I don't know if I have any wisdom to pass on, but no, he's a good kid, and he's uh, you know he works hard, uh, you know stays quiet. You really don't don't uh, hear anything of him in camp, and that's a good thing. When young guys just in camp uh, doesn't make any waves, just does his work, goes out, works hard, and tries to make himself better, and uh, he's always trying to do whatever it takes to make himself better and working hard and uh, I think he's got a bright future ahead of him. Young people, young ball players are better to be seen and not heard, right? Exactly, Wash? exactly. I was, that's what I was told coming up and uh, you know, it's the best advice we have for young guys. Wash Mark Bellhorn flies out to Darren Erstad in center field and Jared, if I can ask you about the leadership that goes on. The one thing I noticed when I'd walk into the Angels clubhouse was right around your locker there would be chairs. Kevin Apier, Aaron Seeley, Jared Washburn, and the younger pitchers would come over and you guys would talk baseball. Could you talk about that experience? Well, we're all a team and we do whatever we can to help uh, make each other better and and uh, I think that's, that's the best thing with a team is uh, everybody communicates well and does whatever it takes to help uh, each other get better and you know as much as you can talk to, to guys like Apier and Seeley that have been around for a long time the more you can learn from guys like that the better. Chuck Finley used to help you. A ton. Chuck helped me a ton coming up and uh, he was uh, he was the ace and the, and the man when he was here and I uh, every word he said uh, I listened as close as possible and tried to take it all in and uh, made me a better player. Favorite moment of mine that sticks out in the World Series was there were many uh, but the character that you showed when you faced Barry Bonds and he hit a missile in the seats <laughs> I when you got the ball and you rubbed it up and you walked to the back of the mound you smiled and said wow I mean you know that sh shows a sign of a relaxed guy a guy who's who, who has confidence in himself but then you have the ability to appreciate the game and enjoy the game yeah he's uh, probably the best player I'll ever play against and, uh, maybe you know he's one of the top five players to ever play the game so when you get to go up against a guy like that and challenge yourself and see what you got that's what that's what it's all about you grew up in when you're a kid playing in the backyard dreaming about playing against the guys like that so uh, you know he hit a home run but I wasn't going to beat myself up over and get mad and then uh, get myself in trouble for guys after him so we might have some young future Anaheim Angel ball players listening today and would you tell them that whenever you face a great pitcher or a great hitter it's not the time to get scared. It's no. the time to, to go ahead and give him all you've got. That's when the fun starts. You know, it's it's fun being in the big leagues, and and every time you go out there, uh, you're you're living a dream, and you get to uh, fulfill a dream and, and have fun. So it's uh, it's it's always fun to go out there and uh, test yourself against the best in the world. We, that's what we get to do every day. And watch the other sports, I think, help develop leadership. You told me playing high school football, and you guys passed a lot, but midway through the season, your high school coaches turned the signals over to you and let you call the plays. Yeah, that was, I'm not sure if uh, he thought I was smart or what. <laughs> I must have known a little bit about football, but it, it wasn't because we were good, I can tell you that. We weren't very good, but it, what? it was kind of fun. Uh, he, he just said, you, you call the plays. You went to a small school in Wisconsin Oshkosh. When did you know that gosh I might have a major league chance. Uh, 98 when I got called up to the big leagues. <laughs> <laughs> and he led his team to a national championship second round draft choice. I believe the Angels had different opinions of you a little more positive than yourself before you were invited up. No I always knew I had a, I had the ability to do that. But. Uh, you, it never really sinks in until you actually get the call and you're sitting in a big league park and with the big league uniform on and in the same same clubhouse as guys like Chuck Finney and Tim Salmon, Garrett Anderson, guys like that. And, uh, then it all sinks in. Adam Kennedy takes care of Alex Gonzalez. Chris Buchek, three shutout innings. Jared Washburn, thanks for dropping by. No problem, many times. Another great year, Wash. Way to go, buddy. And go for another record in the offseason. We'll see. <laughs> Hey now, you're an all-star, get your game on.
It's Toyota's nationwide spring sales event, where value begins with an all-star lineup of quality Toyota trucks. Get an incredible 2000 cash back on Tundra, the full-size truck with the highest overall safety rating. There's even $1,000 back on the best-selling 03 Tacoma. Yes, 2000 back on Tundra, 1000 back on Tacoma. Hurry, get to Toyota's nationwide spring sales event, where value begins with quality. Get the show on. I'm a delicious chili dog. Oh, 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 everybody uh, wants to eat me. Ah, oh no! See how ah, easy it is to spot an imposter? Well, that's what other chili is. So if it's chili you want, go with the original chili that started the craze. Our chili is made fresh every day. And right now you can get a chili cheeseburger, chili cheese dog, and chili cheese fries for just $3. That's all three for three bucks. Only at Wiener Schnitzel, home of the original chili. And still the best. Having fun, a sellout crowd at Tempe Diablo Stadium in Tempe, Arizona. The Angels with a 1-0 lead, and Chris Buchik has to impress you, Rex. Looking good. He's got that nice, tall frame. Good movement on his pitches. He had two seam sinker there. That's going to look like a little changeup. No, another little sinker that stayed up, but he's working both sides of the plate, and he's not overpowering. And if he's smart, he'll listen to every word of Bud Black. Had three punch outs so far to go with those three scoreless innings. That is good work because when you do have injuries in the major league organization, you want to have those AAA guys really push it. And he'll have an opportunity to play the whole season this year in AAA. He went half the season AA and half the season AAA last year. Now Will Kinane, last year with the Chicago Cubs, 30 strikeouts in 26 and a third innings. I saw him come up as a San Diego Padre. He comes on for the third inning to face the top of the Angels order in David Eckstein, Darren Erstad, and Tim Salmon. You know, the one thing we did not talk about with Wash was his injury. And we said we would talk to him, and he, when, when he got it, he goes, you guys didn't even ask me how I'm throwing. Well, that was, that was my <laughs> next <laughs> question. And the guy swung at the next pitch and popped it up, and it was third out. And Wash had to go, but he's doing fine. He had a great bullpen session yesterday. Looks good. He says he's ready to pitch as he's getting up to leave. Say, oh, yeah, tell the people I'm healthy and to be ready to pitch. He had the PFP where the pitchers work on their drills covering first base. He had tripped on his laces and avoiding Brendan Donnelly and fell on his shoulder. A little shoulder strain. So the Angels sat him down. But when I got to spring training last week, Washburn was already throwing and feeling good. And there's Brendan Donnelly who's had a little bit of arm problems but back and throwing very well. And he feels he, he, he'll be ready to make the opening day start although Mike Sosha has not decided he said he will be in that early rotation but how we piece it together getting ready for the Texas Rangers is still not sure. Eckstein sends a ground ball to the right side up with it Bobby Hill he throws out David. Son of Hilder. 2003 season seats are now available to see the world champion Anaheim Angels. Season seat holders receive guaranteed seating, incredible savings over game day ticket prices, playoff purchase options, and more. Operators are standing by right now, so call 1 888 796 Halo. And they've already set a record for season ticket sales over 20,000 Rex. There goes Ersty. He is two for two in the ball game. Yes, and that's what winning a world championship will do. The people want to come out and see this exciting product, and they should. Because one of my favorite things in the offseason this year, Steve, was to call the Angels front office and ask for somebody that I knew wasn't there. They would put me on hold, and I would listen to the calls of Rory Marcus and Terry Smith talk about our Angels in the World Series. I was like, is this our team they're talking about? And then when so somebody would pick up hold. right before home, and you go, could you put me back on hold? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I just it, it, it just gets goosebumps uh, all over my body when I continue to think about oh. last season. They did a fabulous job. It was so exciting listening to Rory and Terry bring you that world title last year. Now Tim Salmon digs in. He bounced into a 6-4-3 double play his first time up to end the first. The Angels with a run in the second inning on a ground out with the bases loaded by Benji Molina and scored Troy Gloss from third base. Erstad does not go, and Salmon hits it to left field and deep. But reaching up and pulling it down, Moises Alou, and Ersty goes back to first. 
spring training, every team is 0 0. We're all in first place. It's an optimistic time of year. And this guy right here, Moise Salou, tremendous ball player, is looking for a comeback year. He's got, he's got great physical ability, good hands. He's in tremendous shape. You can see him. He's not a, an ounce of fat on him. He trained hard, worked hard, saw him before the game, gave me a big hug. He's from a great baseball family. His father now is managing the San Francisco Giants. Felipe Alou, but Moise's last year suffering injuries, only 15 home runs and 61 RBIs. Erstad having a quality spring up near 500 in the batting average, and here is Garrett Anderson, the most consistent angel and three time team MVP. Garrett takes a breaking ball and misses low. Garrett Anderson, now a veteran, 30 years old. From Los Angeles Kennedy High School in his ninth big league season. Back to back years of 123 RBIs. And one of the real joys last year was in game seven of the World Series, the contest with the Giants was tied at one. And I remember sitting in the stands with my wife Stacy and I saying, you know what? I want Garrett Anderson to come through because he and Tim Salmon. Our Mr. Angel. And Garrett ripped a double down the right field line, unloading the bases, game winning runs, and the Angels would win four to one. Great to see Garrett as the hero. He has meant so much to this organization and so underrated. Kunane brings it, and GA takes it. We've been talking with Bill Stoneman, Jerry Washburn. We'll get David Eckstein up here in the eighth inning. Joe Madden is wired up, and he'll be Mike the entire game. Rex Hudler, my partner, headed downstairs. He'll be visiting with the skipper, Mike Sosha, in the Angels' dugout. Eric flips it foul out of play. It is very tough. To beat Garrett Anderson with a fastball. So many pitchers try and get him out off speed, and he'll flip that to left field for a base hit. Angels with a quality start from Chris Boat Buchek, who has thrown three shutout innings. Erstad goes, the pitch taken, throw to second base is in time, and Erstad is out. The Angels done in the third. They'll take a 1 0 lead to the fourth inning here at Tempe Diablo Stadium. Monday, the Lakers take on the Clippers for the final crosstown shootout of a season. And the stakes have never been higher. For the Lakers, a chance to move up the standards. And for the Clippers, last chance for bragging rights. Lakers, Clippers, Monday at 7 on Kick Out Live. We're back for four. Be a part of history. Monday on KCAL 9 News at 4. Celebrate St. Patty's Day with Chef Mario when he takes you to an Irish pub built in Ireland, then brought here. Monday on KCAL 9 News at 4. Get the best values in America from Dodge. Take our best products like Dodge Ram Heavy Duty, the 250 horsepower Intrepid SXT, the best selling minivan ever, and the V8 powered Durango. Plus our best warranty, Dodge's fully transferable 770 powertrain limited warranty. Plus our best deals, like up to a $4,500 cash allowance, or 0% financing on most models. Add it all up, and it equals the best values in America. See your Dodge dealer or visit Dodge.com. Hearing the fans get into the game, and, and even when we were down early, uh, they never gave up on us. I asked Mickey if I should swing the first pitch, and he told me if I felt like it. Santana's 0-2 pitch is hit in the air into right center field. Back on the ball. He has homered three times! I remember thinking right when I hit it. There's no way you hit another one. Oh, what a moment at Edison Field! The fact that it got Anaheim to the World Series is something you dream about. A for Angels and A for Arizona State University. We are nearby Arizona State University, just a few miles away. And here is our upcoming home games for the Anaheim Angels. The Dodgers will be in town on Edison Field, a KCAL 9 on March 29th. Then Texas, the 30th, April 1st and 2nd, Oakland, Seattle, the Yankees in Boston. A great 
homestand with some terrific ball clubs in. Darren Erstad, when he ended the last inning, getting thrown out, looks like he may have jammed his left hand as he rolled over it, but he stayed in the game. Keep an eye on that. There is the dirt dog. He is always filthy. It is amazing how torn up his uniform will be and muddy. It looks like pig pen from the peanuts. Charles Schultz comic section on Sunday afternoon newspaper. We go to the fourth and Chris Buczek will face Sammy Sosa one of the great home run hitters in the game 49 home runs last year and goes after a low pitch by Buczek and gets a ground ball out. Nice pitch by Chris he had Sammy reaching for that one. So Sammy Sosa is out and we've seen three and a third innings of sharp baseball by Buczek in his last start he threw three and a third innings of no hit baseball and then gave up back to back to back doubles and three runs would come across later and he wound up with a four three loss now Buczek will work with Moises Alou and the ball struck well to right field but Salmon is under it and he makes the catch for the second out the one thing that Mike Sosha liked about Chris Buczek was the way he bounced back from adversity in that game. He did finish well First baseman. after getting in He's trouble and got the outs needed to help the club stay in the game. And they rave about this young man's future. He is only 24 years old from LaPorte, Indiana. The Angels' first round pick out of Auburn three years ago. Which goes back to the screen. 20th overall pick when many scouts felt he would go earlier. But he fell later because his agent was demanding a lot of money and the Angels got him on the 20th pick. They also took Joe Torres, a left hander out of high school, on their 10th pick that year. But Auburn has seen some quality talent. Guys like Frank Thomas and Bo Jackson, Greg Olson, Tim Hudson, and Scott Sullivan. Two outs for Hesop Choi. Choi fouls it out of play. Last year, Choi hit 26 home runs in the minor leagues, two in the big leagues. Turns 24 tomorrow. Look at the size. Choi fouls it off, but boot checks. Coach in college, Hal Baird at Auburn, said he thought he had the highest ceiling of any pitcher in Auburn history. And we're talking about Scott Sullivan, who's pitching in the big leagues, and the great right-hander for the Oakland A's, Tim Hudson, Greg Olson, terrific closer for the Baltimore Orioles in years past, and with a high fastball, two balls and two strikes. But Chris can run it up there near 95 miles an hour. His two best pitches in college. Fastball cutter. The Angels have him working on a slider and a changeup. And that was the changeup right there. And he strikes out. He sucks joy. Four shutout innings for Chris Buchek. Join America's largest family during Chrysler's National Minivan Event, where the best-selling minivan family meets America's best value. Get 0% financing up to 60 months on the luxurious town and country, or cash allowances as high as $3,500, plus our exclusive powertrain limited warranty. It's the ultimate minivan value. No wonder there have been 10 million on the road and counting. So hurry to the National Minivan Event today. Now at your Southern California Chrysler dealer, Here in my country, we cherish the land, we protect it, we nourish it. And from the natural wonders of this land, we are able to create the most amazing wonder of all, the one you can taste. This is the pride of my country. This is Chilean fruit, ripe and delicious, harvested with care by us, the fruit farmers of Chile. Come to Vans and taste the natural wonders of Chile. You know I like you, and I like you a lot. I like Janice a lot, too, and I know she's your roommate. Janice? 
And I flip. I'm not sure how to say this to you. You know that I like you a lot, right? Yeah. It's just that I like Janice a lot too, and I know she's your roommate, and I will. So date both of us. What? What did you say? A packed house at Tempe Diablo Stadium. The Angels won, the Chicago Cubs nothing. And Rex Hudler, we told you he'd be right next to that dugout. He's with the world champion skipper, Mike Sosha. Thanks, Fizz. It's a really a different perspective in spring training. And as a player, I always wondered, why do the coaches sit outside of the dugout, Mike? You know, I do. so many guys in the dugout gets a little crowded, but we get close to the players, so I think you can get a little closer to the action, and it gives you, gives you a little more feel of the game. Coach G. This is the first time in eight years we've been able to televise a spring training game. Um, this is a good opportunity to share with the people what spring training is all about, Mike. Yeah. Give, give them a little insight on that. Well, there's a lot of things. Uh, there's different stages in spring. Uh, right now, these guys are starting to fine-tune it for games. Of course, when you first start out, you're trying to get your body in shape. You play some games, you want to start seeing, seeing some velocity on pitches. Uh, you know, getting your breaks in the infield, things like that. But now we've played deep enough in the spring where you, know, you want to start fine-tuning some things, and uh, I think the last couple of days we're seeing some good size, okay. run the bases a little better, some better at bats. Definitely on the mound, our guys are making pitches, so um, you know we're we're about where we should be. So how do you now that you've made several cuts already, but you still have a bunch of players? How do you figure who's going to play, and how do you work these guys in so they get well, some we get, recognition? That way, G. Uh, we you know we I think we want to see get a chance to see a lot of the guys that are. Our younger players you want to get to see guys that are trying to win a job. You know, make sure they get the playing time. And as you get to spring, you find out who the best fit is, what the, what your needs are, and who's going to fill those needs. And uh, you just you, you just coordinate it. You get it. Come on, call T. Typically, let the fans know that the, the, you don't expect the regulars from day one of spring training to step in that lineup and play. I mean, you, this, that's the time typically for young players. Yeah, I think we want to. You just certainly want to play up your stamina, play up, uh, you know, play yourself up to where you're ready to go nine innings back to back. And the season's such a grind, and you, you know, if you don't prepare yourself in the right way for it, you're going to, uh, you know, you, you could de be dealing with some issues. Right now, these guys are are playing about six, seven innings. They started to play back to back days, and. Uh, yeah, getting into this week, they'll start to finish games and play more and, uh, you know, get ready for the start. Could you, could you give the, fan, the, the people an, an idea of what your day is like when you come to spring training? What time do you get here? What time do you go home? What are the drills? What, all that stuff. Well, we're, as a staff, we're here from about 6, between 6, 6.30 in the morning. We're leaving, you know, after games, sometime about the same time. Oh, my team! Ooh, was on that. Got through some good breaking balls. And, that's, yeah, that's, a good, that's a good swing right there. T-Roy started to swing the bat really well the last couple of days. He's right on it. And he he, uh, he gets a fastball there, there and uh, early in the spring he was missing a little bit, getting his timing. Now that bad head's getting you, he'll be, he'll be okay. This is a guy, Woot, got off to a slow start in his games and he's, uh, he's coming around too. His BPs are better and this guy can hit. He can hit, hunt. I just like his hands. He's got soft oh, hands. He, that bat comes out of nowhere and uh, he gets a ball in his zone. He doesn't miss it too often. Come on, it's nice, nice to see the, the the world championship crowd, Mike, that you guys have been drawing the last it's, week it, or so. It's a great atmosphere, it is. And these guys, uh, you know, we appreciate the sport down here. We're ready to get back home, and I know it's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be much of the same. It's uh, the reception's been great down here. Uh, it's it's, uh, it's just been a great environment. Any time you, you come in as a as a as a world champion in spring training, it's it's. It's just a great environment. And you know you were a two-time world champion with the Dodgers as a player. So right. That had to help. Well, you know. you Give you some experience. You'd been through it. Yeah, it's a little different as a player. You don't want to wound. Never mind that. Come on. It's a little different as a player, but you know, you, um, you know, the, the environment's great. I know the fans are enjoying it. The players are enjoying it. We're enjoying it. Now, Woot, Woot last year had that, that nasty little thumb uh, snap yeah. the ligament off his bone. Right. He looks good now. What, how are you going to use him this year? Well, you know, oh wait, Sean, stay back there. You know, he's a guy who's really versatile. He's a guy you want to get at bats for, Hud. And there's a lot of different ways to get him at bats. We use him as a DH against some lefties. He's played some first base. Uh, you know, Sean's a very, very good third baseman too, and uh, he's going to provide some depth there. Uh, we got a lot of guys that are really competing for some at bats, and uh, you know, it's, it gives us some depth we're looking for. Go on, go on. You got a fair, Joe? So that way has to wait. You got that fair? Over the bag. That way, Woot. 
We don't see too many infield hits with Ruth, but we're gonna, we're gonna take it. He really legged that one out. Yeah, he's, yeah, now he's down there. I know Sean, he's down there looking for the green light. So yeah. we're, we're not gonna give it to him right here. All right, I'm, I'm sitting with the manager of the, the World Champion Angels, and Mike's giving signs to Ron Rinicky over there. I mean, we we're right down on the action, Mike. Thanks for giving me a chance to sit here with you today. Hud, you've been, well, you've been, you've been down here before, so you're nothing new to it, but uh, we'll, um, we're going to give Spees a hole here. If he can pull it through the hole, we'll have first and third, and we'll get uh, Benji Moe a chance with two outs to get us a run. This, Mike, guy's, this guy's trying to stay away, trying to probably take some of the hole away from Spees, so Spees going to have to stay on him, shoot him up the middle. I like that. Now, would it throw Renneke off if I started doing some of this? Yeah, I think it would. Should I not do yeah, that? I wouldn't do that. Okay, though. thanks. No, yeah, I, I, no, Mike, I don't want to step out of line here. Because you don't know the signs. You might be giving him a steal, and we don't know what's up. <laughs> The double uh, oh, that's, that's great. Big. Hey, have you seen? Well, you probably have seen a, a home run as big as the one he hit in the World Series with Gibson. Yeah, that, you were there with yeah, Gibson. Yeah. But does that rank? Does Scott's that, home run uh, rank? It's incredible. I mean, I think the circumstances of us, you know, being in a, in a pivotal game where we lose, we're out of it. Uh, what an incredible hit. That way, spins in and down line. Ruth, get a good jump. Keep coming. Come on. Get in the corner. Come on, Ruth. Come on, Ruth. Come on, Ruth. Come on. Out of the way. Out of the way, Woo! You know. That was the only There was an indication there with two outs. Wood had a good secondary lead at first base. Put him in a position to score on that bobble and uh, you know Ronnie's gonna send him with two outs there so that's, uh, that's good base running. How often have you seen him score from first base? Well you know Wood, uh, Wood can get going once he gets going his first couple steps looks like he's stuck in the mud a little Wood that's and then so Speed's being on third base is big right Talk there. to you the know, people about the secondary lead they might be saying yeah. what's that mean? Well that's a, as a pitcher starts to deliver the plate you want to shuffle off. Oh wait swing it Benji! You want to shuffle Benji, off to give yourself some momentum going to the next base and as the catcher if the ball's by the hitter, you stop and you you know you'll you'll get back to first base. But you got to be aggressive on that on that secondary lead to give yourself the opportunity to go first or third or score a double like that. Root did a great job on that one. Got off really nice and at, you know it steps a big play. It forces them to rush down here and they rush the you know they rush the relay throw a little bit. Uh, a little off the end. A little off the end. Just miss that one. All right. Alex Spees! Hey, we'll be right back with Mike Sosa. Hi, I'm Scott Schoenweitz with the Anaheim Angels. This season, we're after every edge we can get during the hot summer months. And off the field, we'll stay ahead of the game by making some investments that save energy and money. Here's what you can do. Replace old appliances with energy efficient ones install a ceiling or a whole house fan, or get rid of that second refrigerator. Remember, energy conservation is always in season. A message from the Anaheim Angels and Southern California Edison. How can I let your sorrow grow? Round and round, my thoughts are all true. But this world will keep on turning. Till I find my way back to you. The guacamole bacon six dollar burger. New at Carl's Jr. Hey now, you're an all-star. Get your game on. It's Toyota's nationwide spring sales event, where value begins with quality Toyota cars, trucks, and SUVs. Get a thousand dollars cash back on an 03 Camry, America's best-selling car. There's even a thousand cash back on the 03 Highlander, 750 back on the 03 Solara, and an incredible two thousand dollars cash back on all 03 Sienna vans. Hurry, get to Toyota's nationwide spring sales event, where value begins with quality. Get the show on. World Champion Angels Baseball on KCAL 9 is brought to you by your Southern California Chrysler dealer. Buy or lease today. The Angels with a 2-0 lead on the Chicago Cubs. Rex Hudler's down on the field with Mike Sosa. Rex, what do you have? Biz, we got spring training ball here from the World Champion Manager Mike Sosa, Bud Blackie to my right. Blackie, how you been, man? Good, bro. Right on. 
Could you talk about some of the drills that you guys do? I mean, people don't realize it. Game, baseball is a game of repetition. You continue to do them over and over again. Tell them what some of the drills you do with the guys. Well, it's like a, a, just today, for example, uh, we got out and we ran the bases hard, worked on our first and third breaks. Uh, in the morning, we'll do some fundamentals before we hit. Today, we worked on our punt defense. And, uh, uh, you know, just trying to keep the, the, the guys, um, guys all on the same page. So in the morning we'll do a fundamental, whether it's defense and the double steal, and sometimes cut off a relays. Then we'll take a good round to infield, bat and practice, get ready to play the game. Watch your young guy Chris Buchek now in this fifth inning of work. Doing a, good job. Doing a good job. I like some of the fastball spots he's hit. He uh, got Eric uh, Carroll's uh, paralyzing with a fastball away his first at bat. You know, he's doing a good job of changing speeds. There's a 1 0 slider. Behind the count, he throws some, some breaking balls. He got Sammy Sosa on him twice on sliders on a 1 0 and 2 0 count. Right there with EK. That bat, he the just broke his bat, and that tells me he had some good sink off the end of the bat. Chris, he's got a nice late breaking slider, HUD. And, uh, you know, that's what Chris has to do. He's got to mix his fastball up, change speeds. Early in the game, he thought he was trying to force the ball inside a little bit and uh, got, got behind a lot of hitters. And I think he's made the adjustment now. He's going to the fifth inning right here, and his pitch count's good, buddy. What's he, about 50 yet? 47. 47, so he's, uh, he's where he should be. And then is it Percy time? Uh, we'll see what the order is most likely. Percy T. Rowe's got a tough play. X got to get over there. X got to. There we go. Um, yeah, we'll go. Uh, we'll go to Percy. Get Percy in inning. We're going to take a look at Rich Rodriguez, who's um, uh, trying to get a spot in our club as a left-handed reliever, throwing the ball really well this spring. Uh, you know, our pitchers have really been doing a great job, and that's uh, mm -hmm. this time of spring uh, when, when the hitters start to come around, the pitchers really have to start to execute pitches, and, and we've been able to do that. Mike, do you think it's an advantage being a manager, having caught uh, had a great career like you did? There's so many managers that are managing in the big leagues that were catchers. Keep it right there, Boo. Way to tire loose. Do you think uh, you there's know, an advantage know, I, to that? I, 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 don't, I think your experience is great in, in learning the pitcher-catcher relationship. But to be honest with you, uh, you know, if Dusty Baker was an outfielder, if we sit here and we talk about pitcher-catcher relationship theory of pitching, uh, he's going to... He's gonna he's gonna know everything I know and uh, and maybe you know some some other things in different areas. So I don't think it's you know a, a kind of a anything that puts you ahead. I think uh, you know you do absorb some things as a catcher. I don't really look at his advantage of stats guy. He's got that gap covered. That'll be smart. All right, wow, well, Mike. Hey, thank you so much for giving us an opportunity to, to to come down in your territory here and being on KCAL nine, man. Way to go. Have another great year, Mike. Thank you, man. Thank you. Okay, buddy. Right. Thank you. nationwide spring sales event where value begins with an all-star lineup of quality Toyota cars. Get $750 cash back on an 03 Corolla. There's also $750 back on the versatile 03 Matrix and $750 back on the restyled 03 Echo. Yes, get legendary Toyota quality, great fuel economy, and cash back. Get to Toyota's nationwide spring sales event where value begins with quality. Get the show on. Let's start with you, Jennifer. There is no communication. Mm -hmm. None. Mm -hmm. He just sits there like a lump watching the satellite TV. How many channels? Do it a lot. I mean, there's like two just for volleyball. Surround? Oh, yeah. Flat screen? Plasma. 43-inch high def. Extended viewing angle. Oh, yeah. yeah. You can see it from the bathroom if you leave the door open. Sweet. You know what you need to do? What? You need... Oh, how big is your woofer? Like 18 inches. God, that's a big woofer. Here is our Edison trivia question. Seven different franchises have won back-to-back -back World Series titles. Can you name the first team ever to repeat? We'll give you the answer later in the ball game. It is 2-0. The Angels have the lead. Steve Fiziok, Rex Hudler is going to be joining us up in the booth. Chris Buchek throwing five shutout innings. The outstanding 24-year-old rookie from Auburn University. And I am now joined in the broadcast booth by Hall of Famer George Brett. George, 3,000 hits in your career. You won a world championship. And I want to liken it a little bit to the Angels. They went 42 years of suffering without one. You went a long time in your career, and I watched you battle the New York Yankees, play the Philadelphia Phillies in the world championship, and to finally get it 
at your age in 1985. What was that experience like? It was pretty special. I'm trying to figure out how old I was then. <laughs> uh, the Royals became a team in 69. I started playing for them in 73, and my first full year was 74. So we didn't have to wait as long as the Angels, but it was a, it seemed like an eternity because in 1976, we lost to the Yankees. 77 lost to the Yankees. 78 lost to the Yankees. 80 beat the Yankees finally. And that was like winning the World Series, but then we lost to the Phillies, and then 84, 81 lost in the playoffs, 84 lost in the playoffs, and finally winning the World Series. Uh, I mean, it was something so special that uh, I don't think anybody that's on the Angels will ever, ever forget that first one. And, you know, last year when the Angels beat the New York Yankees, it was like, uh-oh, the tournament is wide open. Anyone yeah, I mean, win. before the season started, I thought the Angels would win, or the Yankees would win, and probably the odds on favor to win again this year. Well, I remember your three home runs against the New York Yankees, and last year, this young man, yeah. Adam Kennedy, hit three home runs. He only hit eight during the regular season. Hits three against the Minnesota Twins in the deciding game and wins the ALCS MVP. Yeah, that was, uh, that was pretty special for him. Uh, it's funny, I went to game two of the World Series in Anaheim. And I got a foul ball. Really? The last time I went to a World Series game was 1993 in Toronto. I got a foul ball. And then I met Adam <laughs> Kennedy, and he said, hey, we have something in common. I hit three home runs in the playoffs, and so did you. And I said, the only difference is your team won and my team lost. Because <laughs> I hit three in that one game off Catfish Hunter. And then the next thing you know, uh, Thurman Munson hit one of the monuments off Doug Bird in about the eighth inning. And uh, I think we ended up losing four to three. Wow. I was always surprised that they went after you after you were so hot and you had shown them what you were doing. Well, I was a leadoff hitter that year. Whitey Herzog put me hitting leadoff, and um, so I let off the game with one, and then I let off the third inning, and nobody was on, and they don't want to walk the first guy. And, you know, I hit another one, and then I came up again with the bases empty and hit another one. And then Goose Gossage came in. He threw a little harder than Gatfish, and I ended up flying out to left center and flying out to right center. Just missed the last one. Now, when you take a look at the Angels and you were talking to Adam Kennedy, he's from Riverside. You went to El Segundo. What is Southern California baseball like? Well, it's it was a it was a, a hotbed of baseball players growing up. I mean, I, I was uh, uh, what was I, a second round draft pick by the Royals in 1971. And um, there was about three or four other guys, I think, in that area drafted ahead of me. And, uh, you know, they just continue to turn them out left and right. And, you know, back then I think it was more so than today because today baseball is so much more popular in the south and in the east. And, you know, people are playing year-round. That's the one thing we could always do in, Kansas, or in California was play baseball year-round. My high school team won the CIF champions in 1971. We lost in the finals in 1970. Uh, but we were like 31-1. and one. And the year before, and then as soon as that... The uh, high school season was over. We started playing American Legion, and they'd play another 60 games. So I'm playing 100 games a year. I talked to other guys that I played with for years, and they, hey, how was your high school team? Oh yeah, we were 10 and one, and that was it. You know, so we had so much more game experience, and I think that's why so many players come from Southern Southern California really know how to play the game of baseball. Well, here's a guy from the state of Florida who knows how to play the game, David Eckstein. We saw Adam <laughs> Kennedy ground out. An amazing guy. He's an amazing Five guy. Explain why you think he's amazing. Well, he's got he's got a big heart and he's got uh, I think an extra large jock strap. <laughs> I guess the proper way to put that. Uh, if, if you were a scout and you came to grade him, you wouldn't sign him because he doesn't grade out. But the guy knows how to play the game of baseball. He knows how to get the most out of his ability and he knows how to play the position of shortstop. And uh, very very impressed with uh, with him. Not 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 only coming back from after being released. Once a guy gets released, he usually gives up, but he kept battling and battling back. And I think that shows a little bit something about his personality. Uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a gamer. He's one of those guys you want on your team. Do you know the Major League Scouts nickname for him is Just Enough? <laughs> Just enough That's about to get it. The yeah. Out at first base, you were talking about his throws from shortstop almost look painful, but they are better than last year. Well, the ball looks bigger than his hand. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the problem. It looks like he throws everything in his palm, but uh, you know, he does one hell of a job. As soon as I walked in the stadium, the first play I saw was the line drive. He dove up the middle and caught off uh, uh, a lose bat. Yes. Yeah. He but made a, a diving a play, and I'm going, well, there he is. Uh, that's he's the same like guy Phil I remember. Rizzuto. Well, hey, you've played with Freddie Pontek, who's yeah. even smaller than David. Mm-hmm. Very special guy. Here is Darren Erstead, a special guy. I mean, he plays like you did, George. He is always dirty, always hustling. Well, what you always want, what my goal was, was always be the dirtiest guy in the field at the end of the game. And, and, and this, this is a spring contagious. training game. Spring training game. I thought he broke his wrist there. But that's the only way he knows how to play. Yeah. Erstead goes to left field. 
He's from my neck of the country now in Nebraska. Yes, he uh, is. A Nebraska Cornhusker. George, thanks so much for joining okay. us. Thanks for having me. George Brett, Hall of Famer, Kansas City Royals. We'll be right back. The players. The hoops. The scores. March Madness and Sports Central, only on CBS2. Now fly Southwest Airlines from the LA area to Oakland or Phoenix for just $29 each way. So get packing. You are now free to move about the country. Hearing the fans get into the game and even when we were down early, they never gave up on us. I asked Mickey if I should swing the first pitch and he told me if I felt like it. Santana's 0-2 pitch is hitting the air into right center field. Back on the ball. He has homered three times. I remember thinking right when I hit it. There's no way you hit another one. The fact that it got Anna to the World Series is something you dream about. Just another Halo victory! Infidelity, betrayal, in plain English, cheating. Witness the show that goes undercover to expose cheaters. Tonight at midnight on KCAL 9. KCAL TV, Channel 9, Los Angeles. World Champion Angels Baseball on KCAL 9 is brought to you by Carl's Jr. for the great taste of charbroiled burgers. The name of the game is Carl's Jr. There's a look at Tempe Diablo Stadium. The flag on top of the Buttes, the nearby hill. Beautiful part of America and the Angels with a 2-0 lead. It is a packed house area at Tempe Diablo. And Troy Percival will step to the hill. Steve Fiziak with Rex Hudler. We are joined by the Angels' fabulous bench coach, yeah. Joe Madden. He is Imagine one of the most skilled, the organized, brilliant, behind-the-scenes guys in baseball. Yeah, well, he might be down the bullpen. And you can hear Joe Madden talking in the background. Mercy, it's Percy. Early in the game, Fizz. Wow. He's in, normally, he's a stopper. But you know what? Mike likes to use him early against the A lineup of these guys, so he gets to face the A players before they all leave the game. Normally, when he comes in at the end of the game, He's facing triple-A players. And Joe Madden, you're with us right now. What does the yes, coaching I staff hear. <laughs> want to see from Troy Percival? Just that he gets his work in. I mean, of course, uh, you'd like to see a successful inning, but all we want to make sure is that Percy's healthy, his mechanics are in order, and uh, he's able to throw strikes, maybe mix in a curveball now and then. But it's early in the spring, and Percy has not been out there that often. So at this point, health is number one. <laughs> And uh, his delivery being in order because Percy's really Second aware of his pitching mechanics. So those are the things we're really uh, hoping to get them today. Joe Madden, you organize and orchestrate the whole team. They organize the day, the daily routines, the workouts for, for them. How long does it take you to prepare your workout, your worksheets for the daily routine of, of spring training? It just depends on the time of the spring training. Hub. Like early on, when we have pitchers and catchers and there's a whole bunch of people, we got a lot of stuff going on. It's a little bit more difficult. And then when the when the full squad shows up, it, it takes a lot longer. It's a couple hours. Uh, what I've done over the past several years is develop this different system in regard to making forms on a computer. So that has definitely aided in cutting back my uh, preparation time. But it's a matter of getting together with Soch and Buddy and uh, the rest of the coaches and finding out what everybody wants to do. And then I have to sit down there and put it all together. So that's a couple hours. Now this time of the spring, it's a little bit easier. Once the games begin, the days, uh, the mornings become shorter. And with that, uh, it does not take as long to prepare. But you got to stay on top of it because you've got a lot of people depending on knowing where they're supposed to be. And uh, I take a lot of pride in it. I've always enjoyed doing it. And um, uh, the guys do appreciate it. I know that. The computer world has changed even baseball, Joe. And before you came and joined the Angels in 96, I was a member of the team. I, they would just have the daily the daily workouts written on the board uh -huh. and that thing that the people just saw your sheet when you started putting that up there we had to study that as players and go wow look at this where do we go it was like a, a foreign road map but Joe you've been successful doing that you're a world champion bench coach for a world champion manager how do you feel about that oh, pretty darn good huh? <laughs> you know the whole winter has been a fantastic experience it was kind of a fast and furious winter but 
No, I'm really uh, uh, pleased and proud with, uh, with all of that. I mean, working with this group right here, uh, quite honestly, I, I challenge anybody anywhere to say it's any better. Uh, this group that I have the uh, great fortune of coming to work with every day. So uh, it's a tremendous feeling. We're looking forward to the opportunity to defend the, um, the championship and get back there again. I think it's kind of like blood for, uh, in some ways, once you get a taste of it, you want some more. And I, and I really believe our, our boys are focused. You know, the staff is focused. The, the routine, the daily um, practices have been great. Uh, our guys are real self-motivators. You don't have to prod them along to get things done. So uh, we're really looking forward to this year. Joe will keep you with us, and we're going to take a commercial break. We'll come right back with the Angels bench coach, Joe Madden, as Percy goes 1-2-3 with the Cubs. For those who share a passion for driving, Lover's Lane is now open. And Chrysler PT Turbo is the fastest way to get your heart racing. You'll love its 215 horsepower engine, sport tuned suspension, and 32 seating configurations designed to sweep you off your feet. So romance the road in a PT Turbo, California's hottest ride. Now qualified lessees can lease this 2003 PT Cruiser starting at $199 a month. Now fly Southwest Airlines from the LA area to Oakland or Phoenix for just $29 each way. So get packing. You are now free to move about the country. Hi, I'm Jared Washburn with the Anaheim Angels. This summer we're looking for every advantage we can get as the action heats up on the field. But off the field, we want to stay cool, save energy, and save money. And you can too. Here's how. Replace light bulbs with compact fluorescents weather strip around windows and doors, and clean your air conditioner filters regularly. Remember, energy conservation is always in season. A message from the Anaheim Angels and Southern California Edison. Angels 20 Game All-Star Pack presented by 24-Hour Fitness and ESPN Radio. 710 allows you to choose the games you want to see with plans starting as low as $9 per seat per game plus. With every 20 game pack purchase, you receive a free Angels DVD and three month membership to 24 Hour Fitness. Operators are standing by now, so call 1 888 796 Halo. Halo there? That's how I answer my phone. You're the best. No, they're the best. Steve Fiziak with the Wonder Dog, Rex Hudler. Tim Salmon coming to the plate, and the first pitch is outside ball one Joe Madden is the Angels bench coach he's with us and Joe with the Angels winning the world championship I remember a, a quote from Tim Salmon during game six where he said he struck out I believe it was the sixth inning and came back and he said he really felt frustrated it ended the inning with runners on Salmon will pop up here but he said when I came back to the dugout everybody but me was uh -huh. up. Uh -huh. He said that he said the enthusiasm in the dugout. We're going to get these guys. Could you, could you relay that experience? Yeah, I mean that was pretty much the theme all season. Uh, once we got it going early on, uh, there really wasn't a situation we felt as though we were out of the game. Um, it's it's just the attitude that permeated the entire clubhouse, and it's uh, it's the attitude I believe every uh, professional team and organization. Oh boy, GA. Uh, would like to be able to have and maintain among their players. So, yeah, it's a it's a critical time of year. It's a pretty big game, but why should we alter our path at that particular time? I think if, if anything, uh, we gain strength from not trying to change anything. I, I talked about this before. Our scouting reports, how we prepared the time, the time of day, the number of minutes we gave guys to hit it was all the same. We tried not to alter anything, and I think that helped in the long run. Joe Hud here. Would you would you mind? Telling a story about what you did for your mother at the end of the season. I just think that's un that's outstanding. Would you mind sharing that with uh, the people? Okay. Um, well, my dad uh, passed away last year in um, in April, and uh, so that was a very difficult time for the whole family, obviously, and my mother as well. They've been married uh, about 50 years, and uh, so at the end of the season, uh, we happen to win the World Series, which means that <laughs> you get some extra money, which was kind of cool, and I was able to. Um, do some things with that and one of the things I did my mom 
never has had a new vehicle in her life, uh, not one time. Uh, my dad was a plumber and uh, that was a very good business and whatever, but uh, she just, he was never in a position to buy new vehicles. So uh, I was, and uh, what I did was I went and I bought a, a vehicle and I drove it cross country, it took me three days, three and a half days, and showed up at my sister's house. Uh, she had my mom show up, I had a little bow on the, on the car and uh, presented it to her. So she was uh, pretty thrilled by that. She still is, I call her all the time, ask her how the vehicle's running and she's, uh, she's still pretty impressed. So it was, uh, it was a great opportunity for me. I think that's something every someone would like to do for their mother. At some point, I just got lucky. I'm going to the car dealership today, Joe. There you go. <laughs> Joe, that is fabulous. But you are one of those guys who always picks the team up, and it's one of the little things that you do. When you write up the lineup, you look for a positive thought for the day. When did that start? Well, actually, the, the uh, genesis of that was uh, when I was in the instructional leagues. I used to run the instructional leagues for many years, and I used to go with a word of the day an attempt to expand vocabulary and it was kind of fun and the uh, and the players kind of laughed and we had a good time with it and then I would have a test at the end of instructional league whoever won the test uh, whoever got the most right would win the, the, the fine money that we collected during the course of the instructional league so when I got to the major leagues um, I do like to read and I do like to read quotations on occasion so I thought as long as I'm in charge of doing this I might as well do what I want and that would be to include a quote of the day so I did that and uh, it's always meets with some kind of um, uh, it's coolness or people don't really warm up to it in the beginning only because they don't understand but even if one guy appreciated it, I, it made me feel pretty good so I stayed with it to the point it became very popular and I like it because there's times that I need to be picked up during the day and, uh, and and I look for something and I'll find it in my different sources and I'll come up with a quote so anyway it's it's I just don't understand people wanting to be negative or being negative about things it's very easy to be that way and uh, uh, conversely, people don't normally respond to that, so I, I like the positive approach, and uh, uh, it's something we've done, and, and a lot of guys do enjoy it. And I know you always wondered how the guys felt about it when Darren Erstead came into your office one day and said, that thought for the day pumps me up. I'm fired up about it. He did. He, he would do that on occasion, and actually last year Dennis Cook would tell me when I would repeat. So I was kind of impressed with that. You know, you try to sneak an extra, you know, you have a bad day, you don't have enough time to research, you throw one in that you kind of like, and Cookie would come up and shake his finger at me and say, no, no, you've already done that. <laughs> so uh, it's kind of nice when you throw that little Waldo out there and somebody finds it. Well, we do have to answer our trivia question. We will after this pitch to Sean Wooten. Wooten with a walk and a base hit, a run scored as the Angels lead 2 nothing. Gloss and Wooten have scored the run. Oh and here is our trivia question answer. And it's a good one, Joe, so we want you to listen to it. The question is, seven different franchises have won back-to-back -back World Series titles. Can you name the first team ever to repeat, Joe? You're asking me? Yes. Okay, let me think you, about you, that. You can't I, well, see you, it. You, you'd have to say the Yankees, um, but that's probably way too obvious. Actually, it's a team that hasn't won in a long time. The Chicago Cubs. Cubs, really? In 1907 and 1908. Wow. And there goes Garrett Anderson to third base. And Sean Wooten with a base hit winds up at second. Joe, do you teach those guys that aggressive extra base taking ability? Well, you know, that's something that we've always stressed in this organization, and it's just a matter of, um, you know, you have to sell it to your players. Your players have to believe Remind it. Them, angel baseball right there. They already talked about it, Hatch. Um, <laughs> you know, Hatch always wants to get on camera somehow. Isn't he amazing? Uh, anyway, we, we, we've been preaching that for years, and the thing that really makes it different with us right now is the fact that Mike believes in it so much also. You have to have the, you know, the people at the top believing in the concepts, and when they do and they push it, and then the players buy into it, then all of a sudden good things start to happen. What, all we do is we play it the way every coach in, in all of organized baseball want it to be played. The difference being that our players have, do uh, really believe in it also, and they go out and they work it every day. So it's nothing uh, new, it's nothing uh, controversially uh, different about playing the game of baseball. It's just the way it, it was meant to be played, and our guys go after it that way. Could you talk about some of your fellow coaches? First talk about Ron Renneke and his job at third base. Uh, that's the hardest uh, position on the field out there, obviously. There's a lot of really quick decisions to be made. Uh, Rags is a very, very, very uh, astute, bright person, and he picks up on stuff. Uh, that I've never been around people before that are able to do that. And he's got tremendous judgment. Rags is a thinker. He's, he's very analytical. And uh, I think he's the best third base coach in the league. 
How about Alfredo Griffin over at first base? Well, I'm going to say works with the infield. I'm going to say some of the same things because he is also very sharp and he picks up little things constantly. Between our two guys on the field right there, coaching the bases, uh, we got uh, some covert ops going on. These guys are really, really good. Uh, covert ops? Yeah, operations. Yeah, these guys <laughs> stick out their, their peripheral vision is the best in all of baseball. Um, but Primo at first, he's a, he does a great job with the infield. He's a true testament is the, the uh, transformation of Adam Kennedy at second base. Uh, Primo spent a lot of time with him. Primo's Alfredo for me, by the way. I uh, spent a ton of time with him, and he's a tremendous instructor. Um, uh, just, I mean, I just absolutely love the guy. Well, Joe, I mean, Mike Sosha gets credit for making David Eckstein a shortstop, but Mike's quick to point out, hey, 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 Alfredo Griffin, my world champion shortstop, when he played, he's the one who said, I think David can play short. Let him play. Can yeah. you expand on that? Yeah, Primo Perry, we had those discussions going on, and, you know, it was like, do we need to send him back? Oh, my God. How'd that feel, Joe? <laughs> that that hurt over here, obviously. Oh, that got him on the inside part yeah, of the five. Yeah, very, very much right there. You're oh, absolutely right. That's not a good place to get hit. Not at all. Um, mm. uh, anyway, uh, we had a discussion, I believe it was in Texas, and uh, we were talking about sending Eck back to AAA to get some work in at shortstop to find out if we thought he could do it or not. But uh, no, Primo was very adamant that he could. So he went with it, and obviously the rest is history. I mean, the guys then. A tremendous job. You talk about a glue. He's like the stickiest part of this situation right here in regard to keeping things together. He's very, very valuable, and Primo saw that first. Well, the young guy who just passed by you, Mickey Hatcher, could you talk about his strengths as a hitting coach? His strength as a hitting coach is that he treats everybody individually. There's no, there's no cloning going on around here. It's just a matter of uh, taking each guy, how his body operates, and work from there. He's uh, very open-minded. Uh, like any other hitting coach, you might have a few constants, but the thing that uh, Mickey does really well is that he recognizes that everyone is different, and beyond that, his work ethic is unparalleled. Uh, this guy, uh, honestly, is one of the hardest workers I've ever been around, um, and he's also the best uh, golf ball striker I've ever played golf with. Wow. Yeah. Well, you have a situation. Base is loaded here. Eric Owens at the plate, and he's one of the newest angels. Tell us about Eric. Uh, Eric, very uh, intense in a good way. I mean, he, he's intense when he's out on the field, but he's uh, kind of relaxed off of it. I uh, really like his tools a lot. Um, offensively, this guy is capable of hitting 300 uh, plus home runs in the uh, plus range, maybe 15 or 20. Um, uh, very fast. Runs. He's kind of a big guy, thick, but he runs really, really well. Kind of like HUD, actually. And uh, defensively, we've been seeing nothing but good in regard to his routes and his arm strength has played very, very well. This guy is, uh, is a tremendous addition to the team in regard to ability and uh, personality and character. He sends a ground ball to the second baseman. And Bobby Hill throws out Eric Owens. We'll come back with Joe Madden, the Angels bench coach, as the Halos lead 2-0. I'm a delicious chili dog. Oh, uh, uh, everybody uh, wants to eat me. Uh, oh no! See how easy it is to spot an imposter? Well, that's what other chili is. So if it's chili you want, go with the original chili that started the craze. Our chili is made fresh every day. And right now you can get a chili cheeseburger, chili cheese dog, and chili cheese fries for just $3. That's all three for three bucks. Only at Wiener Schnitzel, home of the original chili. And still the best. Hi, I'm Benji Molina with the Anaheim Angels. This season, my teammates and I are putting all our energy out on the field. But off the field, we're doing our best to save energy. And here's what you can do to help conserve. Turn off lights and appliances when you're not using them. Keep your air conditioner at 78 degrees or use a fan instead. Remember, energy conservation is always in season. A message from the Anaheim Angels and Southern California Edison. Hey now, you're an all-star. It's Toyota's nationwide spring sales event, where value begins with an all-star lineup of quality Toyota trucks. Get an incredible 2,000 cash back on Tundra, the full-size truck with the highest overall safety rating. There's even $1,000 back on the best-selling 03 Tacoma. Yes, 2,000 back on Tundra, 1,000 back on Tacoma. Hurry, get to Toyota's nationwide spring sales event, where value begins with quality. Get the show on. Hey, Southern California, stay tuned to KCAL 9, where the Lakers face the Milwaukee Bucks, here on your station of champions.
And Garrett Anderson, a big basketball fan. The Lakers will meet the Bucks tonight at 5.30 on KCAL 9. Garrett Anderson, a forward. He said he ran the baseline very well, played the wing, and he had a scholarship offer to Fresno State. He averaged 22 points a game at Kennedy High School, chose baseball when the Angels drafted him high, and that was a good decision because he is a terrific outfielder. He would have made a heck of a bulldog. Yes, he would have. He and there he goes. He's done for the day. And in spring training, they're a little over halfway now. They're going deeper into the games. Now, Garrett played six innings. He'll go off there and get his shower and stop to work the kids. So many people wanting world champion autographs. Well, Eckstein's over there. These guys the work line. hard. Now they'll go they'll ice down. Home. They'll start to go in the gym and they'll lift the weights field. for another hour Johnny before they even go home. Rich Rodriguez is the Angels new pitcher in the mound. The Angels have had six shutout innings. Five by the rookie Chris Buchek. One by Troy Percival and now Rich Rodriguez who has been pitching well and Joe Madden, I believe you're still with us down on that Angel sideline. I wanted to ask you about Rich Rodriguez. Mike Sosha said he has looked strong this spring. He has. Um, is a true professional out there right now. He had a little bit of a problem with the finger last year, but uh, in uh, in the past we've had to face him, and he's been very, very tough on lefties. He's got tremendous makeup. Um, probably doesn't throw quite as hard as he did a couple years ago, but if you watch his bullpens and how he works uh, that this guy can throw the ball right off the plate when he wants to then he comes on the plate when he does also so uh, Richie's a veteran and uh, we're looking forward to him helping us this year Joe I faced him when I played there you go you know and uh, he threw a lot harder then but right. as, as pitchers like him mature they learn the strike zone more what are some of the pitches I remember he was a single slider guy kind of got that one up yeah I think that was a slider right there and a little bit of a change up to it will fade away from the right hander but that was just an up pitch and uh, the man, see, you have to understand this too. Richie's getting some work right now. During the season, Richie's not going to pitch against Sosa, Alou, etc. His job is to get lefties out. He might have to fight through a, a right hander once in a while, but he's not normally going to have to face a, a hitter of uh, Sosa's caliber from the right side. That's not his job. Sammy's, Joe, Sammy's not quite in mid season form because apparently he thought that ball was out of the park. Had a little topspin on it, Hud. It, just, he, it was a top spinner. But he hopped out of the box, that famous Sosa hop. And just a little spring warning track power for Sammy. Yeah, just a little bit too much topspin. Broken bat, ground ball, hit to Scott Spezio at third. It appears as though Alou likes Gill. It looks like uh, Alou likes the first pitch, Hud. Yes, he's a first ball heater hitter. In the outfield for the Angels, Jeff Devon. That was much like Rex Hudler. Well, this copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Anaheim Angels and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Anaheim Angels. The season has officially begun because Rex Hudler has said disseminated. That means don't copy it. <laughs> Here's he sop Choi. That's one of our old vocabulary words by the day, way Steve. Joe yes, and I want is. you to know yeah, Joe. Just, you're over now. Yeah. You encouraged me last year. Yes. To to read 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 books. I did. I actually read one this morning. What did you read? Uh, one fish two fish. Dr. Seuss <laughs> is one go. of my favorites. That's all right, man. You read it. Start somewhere. Read across America, man. I like to go into the classrooms and have Very some nice. fun with the kids. That's great stuff, man. That's that's the what? most important thing to do. Joe, how about the size of this kid? He's Look very large from down here, Hud. Oh, when I was down there, he looked like a giant. He, he does. He, he's very big. He's got a nice swing. I mean, it's not necessarily just a power hack. This guy's got a good hack, period. You can see him like the first hack that hit the ball to the right of Rusty also. So, uh, but he's a good look. This, this whole lineup that the Cubs present is uh, kind of awesome, actually. Take a look at it. Watch it. He's got inside out. Yep. Two hits That's now. Good. He's kept his hands inside. I noticed he worked the other side of the curious. field. Yeah, and I think when he gets ahead in the count, you got to be heads up that he might go ahead and try to jerk something, probably something soft. Something, something hard probably goes to the left side, maybe pull on something soft. Joe, don't you think it's great that the influx of players from different countries are, are starting to come into our game and be impact players? Ichiro Suzuki, who'd have thought he would have been the MVP and Rookie of the Year in the right. same year? Now this kid has a chance to be a Rookie of the Year. I love it, Hud, because I think it, it, it increases the quality of the game played on the field. I mean... Uh, of course, we have a bunch of kids in this country that want to play baseball, and that's wonderful. But you're getting these other folks coming in, uh, big, strong people with a lot of skills, and it just uh, obviously uh, increases the level of play on the playing field with the expansion and all. 
uh, to have all these teams supplied just by kids from our country. You'd like to believe that you'd have enough, but it's just not true. Um, you have to go outside the, uh, the boundaries, and there's so much good baseball being played all over the place, and I definitely believe it raises the level of play in our game here. Eric Carroll's trying to drop one into right field. He will do just that. Sosa will score. And going to third in the play is he Sop Choi as Eric Karras gets an RBI single to right. Well, uh, Former Dodger Karras chips in an RBI single. He's been out, Steve. He's had, he had a bad case of bronchitis. Man, it was hurting him. I talked to him before the game, but this one here finds a little bit of spring real estate. Eric Owens overran <laughs> the ball. And that allowed Hesep Choi to scoot on into third base. But if Karos told me before the game he feels better now. He even had to go to the hospital for that bronchitis. It was nasty. But he says he's happy to be a Cub. It was a good move for him. And now the optimism is blooming everywhere for him and the Cubs. And now Corey Patterson's at the plate and he swings and misses at the Rodriguez offering. Angelsbaseball.com now introduces AnaheimAngels.tv. Watch live games of your favorite team right on your computer. Sign up now only at Angelsbaseball.com. We're going to have to do that, HUD, on the games we're not broadcasting. Log on. Okay, Cal has increased their number of games this year by four. Two in the spring training, one this course this afternoon. And one on March 29th at Edison Joe. Field against the Los Angeles Dodgers. Joe, now, yes, sir. as the starting players start to leave the field and they're off now, these other guys come in now. Can you explain a little bit of what goes on in a spring training game? Um, yeah, well, uh, I think I heard you guys allude to it earlier. Base hit by Patterson to right field, and that will tie the game as Choi comes home. Uh, normally what we'd like to do is get three at bats for the regular players as we get deeper into the camp it's probably hey! going to being four etc but for right now it's three um, normally five six innings on defense three at bats is a good uh, ratio to go with this this part of the spring now they'll go inside and get some of their other work done like we were talking about earlier whether it be uh, running or uh, uh, weightlifting etc so uh, you get the other guys in right now and you obviously get a, a chance to look at somebody else uh, Right now we're looking at Benji Gill at first base. Uh, you got the, the new outfield Ramirez out there in center field. So you get a chance to look at these other folks uh, a little bit also. We just sent back a bunch of guys to the gap, you know, part. And we've had a lot of them in and out during the course of the spring also. So the big boys, the varsity play a couple innings, you got a couple at bats, and then you get them out of here, and then you start taking a look at the other people in different positions. Well, the one thing that has to impress you is the versatility of the lineup. A guy like Sean Figgins, we're seeing mm -hmm. in the outfield as well as the infield. Yeah, Figgy, um, Figgy and, and Hud could appreciate this. In some ways, uh, reminds me of Tony Phillips. Uh, there's a lot of similarities in the, in the style of play, and um, if Figgy can learn to do something like that, he can become the top, one of the top utility players around. Joe, thank you very much. A double play handled by Alfredo Amezaga. The Cubs tie it up at two. Richard Card here. Let's play the feud. 100 people surveyed. Name something people do which requires a partner. We'll be right back with the number one answer. Think fast. Think fun. <laughs> Think family feud. Something people do which requires a partner. If you said dance, you guessed the number one answer. For more fun, join host Richard Card for the all-new family feud. Monday at 6.30 on KCAL Live. Thank you. I could sit out here all afternoon. Ooh, look at that. I love watching the cars go by. Let's well, check this out. Ah, Mustang. Always hot, always cool. Ford Mustang. Now with zero percent or two thousand dollars cash back. Why watch the cars go by when you could be driving a Mustang? That's not just a car. That's an attitude. Fun starts at your Ford deal. Out alone in the dark and lost inside my home, but I'm looking for the answers, trying to find my way back to you. The guacamole bacon six dollar burger, new at Carl's Jr. 2-2 ball game Cubs and Angels bottom of the seventh inning Steve Fiziak Rex Hudler we're now joined by Angels shortstop 
David Eckstein and what was your off season like? It was great. Um, I had a great time. Got to go do some interesting things and got back prepared to get ready for the season. What was interesting less than a week after the World Series ended you were heading to Japan to play with Barry Bonds the guy that your team beat San Francisco Giants in the World Series. Yes um, I had the opportunity to go play against the Japan All-Stars and it was a fantastic time. Mr. Bonds was excellent. He was awesome. He um, you know came over and congratulated and um, had a good time over there and it was fun to play. David what was I got to play a year over there nine months I played there and I really enjoyed their culture and things what stood out about their culture that you liked in your seven days you were there um I'd like it was kind of it was kind of weird they had so much respect and respected other people that when we were up to bat they did not say a word so just to respect um how they respect their elders that's what I enjoyed of their culture so much how about the work habits because Rex has told us that their training is much different than ours yeah, you could tell they were everybody on the team was fundamentally sound in which they went out there and um, played the game the way it was supposed to be played. You have the big guys, you know, laying down bunts and running hard. That's the one thing I like about um, Hideki Matsui, the guy who came over from New York, that he ran every ball out hard and he's going to be able to um, get hits that way over here. Let me tell you, Fizz, Dave, David would be a star in Japan <laughs> because he has the same work habit as they, habits as they do. He would be accepted and loved, and it was so much fun to go there. But, David, forget about Japan, man. You're the man here. It's two years in as a shortstop. That, means that. Do you, that looks good. Yeah. That's a base hit for Adam Kennedy. What are some of the things that you are going to focus on this season in your third year? In your third year? It's just getting more consistent. The main thing on defense is just making the routine plays, getting a little quicker, turning dog plays, so we turn some more, and um, become more productive on the offensive side. You know, for me, my style of game, I have to be able to execute the game and just try to come even more, even better at doing that. You know, Mike Sosha was asked, have the Angels become fat cats because they've won the World Series? And he said, you should go over to field two and watch David Eckstein and Adam Kennedy work on double plays. Working with Adam, who just got the base hit, talk about that development at the Keystone. Uh, it, it's definitely, it, it started two years ago, and then last year coming to camp, the main thing was we need to turn more double plays. And Alfredo Griffin, you know, you got to, I'm so thankful for him. He goes out there every day and works his butt off for Adam and I, hit, hitting his ground balls and stuff. And it enables us to become better and just the knowledge that he has that we can take from him. And so it's a day-to-day -day basis. We're like we're out here today, you know, and we're just working on trying to get that just that, you know, a tenth a second quicker. And and that kind of things will help in big games. Mezga was looking for the bunt. He took the pitch, and Kennedy is out at second base. Dave, what about Having dinner with the president. <laughs> could you could you tell me what that experience was like? It was unbelievable. It was awesome. Um, having the opportunity to even go into the White House and see him, but just have like a personal dinner with like 12 other people was outstanding. I was just so happy for my mom. I was able to take my mom with me, and she was she's still beaming today from it. Were there photo opportunities? There's definitely photo opportunities, and we got um, we were able to get a photo in the Oval Office with President Bush and um, my mom. And so did he let you sit in his seat? And we got to sit in the in the behind the desk and stuff. We got to, we got, it was he was very personal, um, very nice, made you feel welcome. It was it was unreal. And he was well aware of your past and your accomplishments in the World Series and pulled you aside and he said he really enjoyed the way you played the game. Yes, he um he, he was talking to my mom and myself and he goes out and he goes to my mom. I like what I like about your son so much is that the integrity he has for the baseball game where he goes out and plays hard and he goes, I might not be the best president, but I'll always hold the integrity of this office. And that was something you'll always remember. Oh, that is outstanding. And we have been talking with Joe Madden and Mike Sosha, and they've been talking in wonderful terms about Mickey Hatcher, who is your hitting instructor. I know, I know how much you love Mickey Hatcher, but I also wanted to talk about another hitting instructor that you have, and that is your brother Rick. When you had trouble in Boston, yes. the one year, Rick was the guy who helped you out. Tell me about that. Um, my brother, my brother is a great person, and luckily, when I come up, when I came up through the system, you know, no one really ever told me how to hit. I always just picked up the bat and hit from ever since I was young, and no one's ever messed with it. And so it was, it was out of funk when I got to Boston. They, in the AAA, they changed me up, and. Ricky was the only one that really knew my my stroke because it's not the most unique. You know, I mean, 
most common stroke you'll see. <laughs> and so and so he's the one that knew about it. So he took me aside and stuff, and we've been working on it. Didn't from, he call you from Georgia? He called me. Yeah, he called me from home. I actually got the next flight up and flew up there to see me, to work with me, to get me back. And he's like, what's going on? David, today is, a, is really a, an opportunity to show the fans a spring training game, to teach them some of the things and what players do in spring training. And I ha couldn't help but notice on you the, 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 the blister and the callus that, that you have. That's on his palm. Now, we were talking about the handmade bone. That's right here. That gets in the way of the knob earlier. But this is a blister here that's unbelievable. It's a hard callus that is from the knob of the bat. Yes. Now, how long does it take you to build that blister? Um, I'll have this probably until I stop playing baseball. It's just consistent. I've, I've had it for probably about the past, I would say, at least eight, ten years. Do you ever shave it down? No. Does it ever bother you? It doesn't bug me until one day I was in college and they said, oh, you got to shave it down. So I shaved it down. It killed me. So I haven't touched it since. Keep the callus. <laughs> So it, it, it's hard. I mean, yeah. I, remember, I remember the blisters I got on my feet. I mean, spring training is a time to where you yeah. get the calluses, you get the muscles in shape. Um, you're not worried so much about winning and losing or your stats, especially when you're established like you are. You've got to feel good, even though you're always looking behind you. All players do. That helps keep you motivated, doesn't it? It definitely does. Um, I know, like you said, there's nothing you can do to prepare yourself for spring, spring training. You go out there and you work as hard as you want. So when you put on your uniform for the first time this season, you're going to get the more calluses. You're going to get the blisters and stuff. And, yes, you're always looking behind you. You know, in this game, there's so many great players that you just don't want to get, you know, like you were saying, like just like you believe that you're just um, above everybody else where you don't you, you got your job locked up. And that's not the case. we got too many good, great guys out in this organization that we better keep fighting. Well, here's one Jeff Devannon that has been pushing. But, David, you're also a stolen base artist. Alfredo Amezig is at first base. What is he doing reading the pitcher right-hander? Almost went there. Right. He's just reading right now. He, You see he had the real good lean right there. He's reading probably if he lifts up high, he's going to take off. But when he's just – he slide-stepped right there. And so he shut it down. And it also – um, there's cases where you will flake, fake bluff just to get the infielders to move and maybe um, create a little bit of a hole. He's looking to run right here, though, you can tell. He's leaning again. Yeah. Dave, David, you know, the, the conditions sometimes in spring training, the, the fields down here are baked or hard a little bit. Looks a little soft around the bases yeah. uh, there where he is. Now, footing is important for, for getting a good grip to steal a base. There are sometimes, is it so muddy that you don't want to run? Yeah, there's sometimes it's muddy that you don't, like right there. That's gone. The Bannon hits it well, right field. Yeah. Sammy Sosa back, good call. <laughs> David Eckstein, home run, Jeff DeBannon. <laughs> X you know the, sound. <laughs> the X factor factors in again in the broadcast booth. It factors in everywhere. Biz. What a stroke by Devannon. Good young switch hitting yes, outfielder. Yes. Did you know because of the swing or the sound? Um, the sound. I saw. I heard the sound. Um, sound will tell you. Right yeah. down the middle. Fully extended. Yeah. Nice full swing. He has shortened up his swing. He has. He had the, um, the back surgery last year, and because of that, he has cut down his swing, which I think is going to help him. Well, well, he said that was a blessing in disguise. He said, I was a violent swinger in the past, but it hurt my back. I had to really shorten up a little bit, be a little quieter at the plate to take the pain away. And he goes, believe it or not, it helped me. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's his third of the this, this season, I think, this one training. I liked him when I saw him a couple years ago. And players, you know, they get sent out, and they might get injured, and it's a tough road back. But he's got a smile on his face, sharing with a youngster in the yeah. dugout there. That's beautiful. Yeah, he's been he was playing with them all day in the dugout. So. And now Julio Ramirez and or rather Jose Molina and has popped up to first base and the catch is made. David Eckstein, thank you so much for coming up here and visiting with us. Outstanding way last to year, the world champion, in. Angel Shortstop. He factored it again. And X, way to go, buddy. Have another great year. Appreciate it. Even a big kid like me loves this place. But when you tell the family we're going to the San Diego Zoo, you got half the neighborhood wanting to go along. Fortunately, you have a Ford Explorer. It seats seven. It's a great ride. The 2003 Ford Explorer. A great ride and a great deal. 0% for five years on America's best-selling SUV. Getting there's half the fun. The fun starts at your Ford dealer.
There's something happening at Craig and Auto Parts. New items at great prices. We're stocking up like never before with tools, automotive chemicals, the accessories you want, and the parts you need. And if you find it lower somewhere else, Craig and will beat their price by 5% guaranteed. Craig and the power of the star. Get a case of Valvoline Motor Oil for only 89 cents a quart after rebate with coupon and this 18-volt cordless drill kit for only $29.99. Hey now, you're an all-star. It's Toyota's nationwide spring sales event, where value begins with quality Toyota cars, trucks, and SUVs. Get $1,000 cash back on an 03 Camry, America's best-selling car. There's even $1,000 cash back on the 03 Highlander, $750 back on the 03 Solara, and an incredible $2,000 cash back on all 03 Sienna vans. Hurry, get to Toyota's nationwide spring sales event, where value begins with quality. Get the show on. Trailing the Giants 5-0 in the seventh inning of Game 6, the Angels faced elimination. But Scott Spezio changed the course of baseball history with this. A three-run home run that sent Edison Field into a frenzy and incited the Angels' most dramatic rally in a season, filled with thrilling comebacks. Here is our Chrysler game summary of game six. The Angels five run comeback was the largest in World Series history by a team facing elimination. Spezio's three run home run gave him 19 RBIs for the playoffs that tied a major league record and the Angels with three runs in the eighth yeah, inning on Erstad's home run and losses two run double. The Angels were down five nothing and they won it six to five. Yep. There he is, Lenny Harris, veteran bench pinch hitter, utility type player, been in a long time trying to make this ball go. First pitch hacking. And the out recorded, and the Angels continue, holding on to a two run lead, four to two on Jeff DeBannon's home run. Join the Angels on Tuesday, April 1st. This is going to be great, Hud. Listen to this for a special pregame ring ceremony as the Angels players and coaches are presented their 2002 World Champion rings. But there's more. All fans in attendance will receive a free 2002 World Champion commemorative ring. Tickets are going fast, so call 714 663 9000 to reserve your seats today. And do we have one of those commemorative rings with us? Can we well, are they just fans? No, they just showed it right there. The only difference between that ring that we just saw and the one the players are going to get are the carrots. There's no Look carrots that. in that one. This one here, there's diamonds all around the. Then the A's in Ruby. It's in there in rubies, and there's diamonds everywhere. Joe Madden, have you seen that new oh, ring? Have not. I've, oh. heard, I've heard about it. It's pretty cool. Oh, way to go. Way to get me and Fizz on board there so we can get one, too. It's all the work you guys did for us. We Very appreciate nice. that. That's great stuff, man. Jojo, you work hard and long for something like that. I mean, can you do you do you still have to pinch yourself at all? And, and well, like when I see Scott Spezio's home run, three run bomb drift over that fence, I get goosebumps still. Yeah. Do you feel the same way? Yeah, actually, last night I, uh, a couple guys came over my place for dinner. And while they were preparing dinner, uh, that was uh, Bobby Ramos and Orlando Mercado were making dinner. Uh, we were watching the DVD from uh, last the, from the World Series, and uh, it really was. I mean, you watch it over and over again, and uh, as you stated, and when you're going through the process, it's kind of surreal. It doesn't seem like you're supposed to be there, but then when it's all over, you can sit back and really analyze what occurred, and, and you see it um, and document it in that manner. I mean, it's it's just amazing to know that you're actually there. And took part in it, and uh, we're on the winning side. It's tremendous. Well, the new pitcher is Jason Zakota. Last year in AAA, a 4.47 ERA with the White Sox. Joe, can yes. you tell us about Jason? Yeah, uh, Jay's. Um, uh, he's a very durable pitcher. He could, he could either start or pitch out of the bullpen. Fastball, a uh, little splitty, uh, breaking ball. Uh, seems to have very, very good makeup. He has not pitched that much during the course of the spring, and as you stated, we're getting to look at him for the first time. Um, I think this fella is going to have a, a pretty good impact on the Salt Lake team and hopefully get a chance to help us down the road at some point. He is facing Ramon Martinez. One out, top of the eighth inning. The Angels up four to two as 
Jeff DeBannon broke the 2 2 tie with a long home run to right field. Joe, yes. you're, a, you're a tremendous baseball man. You've been a baseball lifer, and you know the importance of a solid bench. Now, you, in, with the team, they lost Orlando Palmero, Alex Ochoa, and Al Levine, who was a reliever. Um, can you tell, how, tell them how Mike has improved the team with the players you got, and, 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 and how about the speed that could be there on the bench? Could you explain the bench to the people? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, well, first of all, we, as you stated, we've lost some very, very good people. Orlando Palmero, probably one of the best um, pinch hitters in the American League, and Alex Ochoa, when he came on board, uh, he, he was, played a big role in what we did in Chris Allen, but uh, first of all, you look at Eric Owens. Now, if Eric Owens is on our bench on any given day, you've got a regular uh, major league outfielder, a regular starting kind of a guy sitting on your bench. Uh, if he's if he's playing, and say maybe you have Fulmer on your bench, or you have Sean Wooten on your bench, uh, and then again, we don't know exactly if we're going to have 11 or 12 pitchers that might allow us to carry somebody else, like a uh, Figgins or a Devanin or whatever. Uh, but we're going to have a pretty good balance, I believe. I think it's uh, the strength of the bench is going to be the fact that you have some. Um, Veterans there are people that understand how to uh, play that particular role, which is very, very important. You also have a balance in regard to hitting from both sides of the plate as well as speed. Um, uh, Benji Gill just received that throw at first base, one of the best utility players in the league. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a nice balance against righty, right handed, left handed pitching. We could, uh, we could set up some really nice matchups. Um, I think it's, uh, it's going to be a very, very strong bench, and as you stated, I totally believe in order to do what we did last year, you have to have a very, very strong bench to pick you up. As an example, when uh, Timmy went down in August up in Toronto and uh, Orlando Palmero came on and did such a tremendous job along with Alex Ochoa. So uh, if we're going to have a chance to repeat at this thing, the, ben the bench is going to play a very, very big role in that process. We are talking with Angels bench coach Joe Madden. There is Sean Wooten who can play first base, third base. He can catch. And of course Jeff Devanna now playing left field and Joe I wanted to ask you about his skills because he's opened a lot of eyes this spring training. Well I heard you guys talking earlier about Devo and you mentioned something that's very very uh, important the fact that he's really uh, with his uh, hack at the plate he's, he's, he's toned it down a bit and he's getting better results he was uh, too much body involvement for so many years he'd be out of control and he, he, this is nothing new to him we talked to Jeffrey about it all the time and uh, now all of a sudden he's starting to figure it out. The light bulb goes on. It goes on at different points at different times in somebody's career. And he's understanding the concepts right now. So Devo is uh, absolutely a 5 2 player in regard to his physical skills. Hitting, hitting with power, his uh, defense, his arm, and his speed. I mean, this guy is what every scout's dream. And as well, and on top of that, a tremendous body. He's a very, very strong person. Uh, injuries have um, impacted his development over the past couple of years. As you all well know, but uh, Devo is able to stay healthy, and, uh, and he understands he understands his concepts, which he is right now in regard to his. It's all about his hitting. If he hits, Devo Devo's going to play in the major leagues on a, on a for a very long time, actually. There is Jeff Devana, the Angels' left fielder, and Julio Ramirez in center, Eric Owens in right field. A lot of changes. Yes, he did. he did, and a strikeout for Jason Zacota. There's an ex-teammate of mine oh, stepping me, in. Two, three. Yeah, Midre Cummings. Midre Cummings at strike two. Right. Did he go? Looks like he crossed the plate with that bat. Midre was with with me in Philadelphia. Fighting Phils. They've improved their team a little bit. Jim Tomey is going to be launching it. Veteran Stadium, the last year of Veteran Stadium. Thank goodness. How about Kevin Millwood, signed from Atlanta, traded for? They gave up a minor league catcher to get Kevin Millwood. Here it's the Angels trying to start things nicely. It's their World Championship year in 2002, and Cummings went around, and Dakota gets the strikeout. How boy, J Mo. We head to the bottom of the eighth inning. Here at Tempe Diablo Stadium, 4 2 Anaheim. Hey now, you're an all star. Get your game on. It's Toyota's nation.
nationwide spring sales event, where value begins with an all-star lineup of quality Toyota cars. Get $750 cash back on an 03 Corolla. There's also $750 back on the versatile 03 Matrix and $750 back on the restyled 03 Echo. Yes, get legendary Toyota quality, great fuel economy, and cash back. Get to Toyota's nationwide spring sales event, where value begins with quality. Get the show on. Right now, fly Southwest Airlines from the LA area to Oakland or Phoenix for just $29 each way. So get packing. You are now free to move about the country. Have you looked at a Ford Taurus lately? Have you seen how roomy it is? Did you know it has the government's highest rating in front crash tests? Did you expect the luxury of leather? The Ford Taurus. Thousands less than Camry and Accord. 0% financing or $3,000 cash. If you haven't looked at Ford lately, look again. World Champion Anaheim Angels Baseball on KCAL 9 is brought to you by your Southern California Ford dealers. See your Ford dealer today. The Anaheim Angels with a 4-2 lead over the Chicago Cubs before a new Tempe Diablo Stadium record 9,786 fans here to watch the Cubs against the world champions. It's the Clorox Bleacher Sweepstakes. Hurry to any Southern California Food for Less store and enter to win a family four-pack of tickets to the Angels versus A's game on April 12th. Clorox and Food for Less are proud sponsors of the world champion Anaheim Angels. Because we got big league ball. It's yes, coming do. soon. That bell will ring. Julio Ramirez hits one in the air. Center fielder Tom Goodwin calls everybody off and makes the catch. Goody. There's a Fresno State Bulldog and also played for many teams including the Dodgers but last year was on Dusty Baker's National League champion San Francisco Giants. And right now we're seeing a host of substitutions. Joe Borowski comes on to pitch for the Chicago Cubs and the Angels going with Gary Johnson. Gary Johnson. Johnson. And what you do HUD is you scribble out and pencil in as fast as you can because they just completely rotate him now. Uh, this is just a thing in spring training. I'm kind of happy we don't broadcast every game. It's, it'd be a nightmare. <laughs> oh my God! I talked to Terry Smith, and today it's Jose Moda with him because Rory Marcus is off doing our USC Trojan basketball team. They're playing in the Pac-10 tournament championship game against the Oregon Ducks. And there is Johnson taking a fastball inside. Here's a good-looking find for the Angels. They picked him up. He went on a two-year Mormon mission earlier in his amateur career, and then signed with the Angels and had a wonderful double-A season. Had a tough time last year going through some injuries. Still, they like his talents and has had a fine spring training. Big guy at six feet, four inches tall. Joe, yo, hey, what do you think about this young left-handed hitter? Love him. Um, this guy's got a really sweet hack. If you watch how he starts the bat with his oh, front yeah. leg, he really gets loaded up. That is his... Um, that's, the, that's, that, that's a great trigger, but he really has to be careful with that in regard to timing. When his timing is right, uh, that combined with the, the flatness, flatness of his hack, this guy generates a really good swing. Now, Fizz, you, you've, been, you've been used to hearing me the last four years with my baseball terms. Joe's using baseball terms right now, talking about the weight shift and keeping his weight back and loading up. That's in the word we use, it loading up. Right. And the weight transfer, the flatten of the bat, the hack, that's a swing. There's a lot of terminology in baseball, Joe, and you're a man of many words. Yeah. Go ahead and give us some more baseball terms. Well, when you, when, first of all, when you talk about hacks, I don't like to use the word swing because swing indicates that you're using too much of your arms to hit the baseball, and it's really not. It's uh, from the fingertips of the elbow, so I, I prefer to refer to it as a hack uh, as opposed to a swing because you want to paint the correct mental picture in regard to that. Uh, you've already talked about some of the other things uh, uh, with the stance and all, uh, you know, how his feet are operating. 
the, the late kick right there, you just oh, saw that yeah. getting loaded up. Um, all of those things um, uh, are, are involved in uh, GJ's swing right here, his hack, excuse me. I shouldn't even use the word swing, but uh, yeah, you're right, Hud. There's a lot of vernacular that's a little bit different. It's just their own little uh, way of uh, describing the world. And that's as that right. always says, that's if a you don't play. hack, they'll send you back. That's right. He's absolutely right. <laughs> He's that, that was a heck of a play. So two outs now for the Anaheim Angels. We want you to stay tuned because the Lakers take on the Milwaukee Bucks as the world champions go tonight at 530 on KCAL 9. You can watch Shaq but right here in our truck out beyond the left the right field fence. We have our own Shaq. We have a double header. Of world champions today the Angels the Lakers and Mitch Reinhardt is our baby Shaq. Mitch Reinhardt is one of the greatest graphics. Heads up. We like that right there. And the, we, the story needs explaining because Mitch came on the road last year to do graphics and Rex Hutler was so excited he goes that's like playing in a pickup game and you show up and your teammate is Shaq. <laughs> we love the people out in the truck. Joe Madden it's all a team effort anywhere not just on the field but in everything absolutely. we do. You're absolutely right. By the way Sosha and I just talked about it. Uh, Spees is ready when he starts pulling balls. Uh, that hard foul, we know Spees is right. <laughs> we always make fun of him in batting practice. If he starts hitting loud foul balls, we know he's good. He is locked in from the right side, from the left side. He is two for two in the game and been on base three times. Singled, tripled, and was hit by a pitch. He flips this one foul territory, but it is taken care of by Chicago. We'll be back with the ninth inning. Angels leading by two. There's a big advantage to being the Southland's largest television news team. It's what's actually fueling the fire. When important stories break, no one brings it to you faster than CBS 2 News and KCAL 9 News. First on the scene. It collided with a truck that was trying to cross. First to uncover the important details. 35 power poles went down. First with information to keep your family safe. CBS 2 News, KCAL 9 News. First when you need to know. Hi, I'm Scott Schoenwitz with the Anaheim Angels. This season, we're after every edge we can get during the hot summer months. And off the field, we'll stay ahead of the game by making some investments that save energy and money. Here's what you can do. Replace old appliances with energy efficient ones, install ceiling or a whole house fan, or get rid of that second refrigerator. Remember, energy conservation is always in season. A message from the Anaheim Angels and Southern California Edison. I'm a Ford truck man. That's all I drive. I ain't got no boundaries. I don't compromise. There are no better trucks to drive than the best selling trucks in America. And right now, during Ford's Truck Month, it gets even better with 0% financing or great cashbacks on your favorite Ford trucks. So whether it's the hard working, hard playing Ranger, F 150, or Super Duty, you know your truck is built Ford Tough. Ain't no doubt my king of the mountain is built Ford Tough. Don't miss the Angels game on Wednesday, April 2nd. All fans in attendance will receive a collector's poster sponsored by the U.S. Army and 95.5 KLOS commemorating the 2002 Angels championship season. It is beautiful. And I've got that picture of the last out in my office at home. Angels and Rangers, Wednesday, April 2nd, 105 ball game, three World Series posters. There's the number to call, 714 663 9000. And the Angels going with a new pitcher. He is a young right hander with a 4 2 lead. He will try and protect it here in the top of the ninth inning. Doug Nickel, Mike Sosha, really likes his heavy fastball. This is his 15th game. Where he pitched in 14 last year with the Phillies and the San Diego Padres. And Mike also said he has a very good knuckle curve. Yes, Joe, how about that? I have on, on him fastball knuckle curve changeup. You're right on. Um, yeah, he's um, uh, fastball velocity. We haven't seen all of what we, we've been told in the past. I think he's just really trying to work into that. Uh, but the knuckle curve is there. It's a sharp uh, down breaking pitch, as you are aware of. Um, yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't hit it. Yeah, I mean uh, nobody can when it's thrown properly. Uh, 
Uh, this guy's a former Angel farmhand that came on back home, and uh, he's done pretty well so far. He will face Troy O'Leary. Another one of the veterans that Dusty Baker went after in the offseason. Troy start with the Boston Red right Sox there. in his past. There is the knuckle curve. Troy, I like him. Yeah. He's a he's a great kid. I met his father today. They live in the LA area. And I said, Troy, you gotta get in there and take a hack. Uh-huh. He's a guy that kind of moves his feet a little bit, Joe, in the box. He kind of steps up and hits. Yes, he does. You're right. Um, that's kind of unusual. A lot of most people don't do that, but you're right about him, he does. Larry gets under it, drives Ramirez back, Julio, before the warning track makes the catch. And one out to start the ninth inning. But Doug Nickel was not only a prospect in the Angels organization, but the Philadelphia Phillies really liked him when he was with them, Joe. Yeah, he's, he's got good stuff. Like I said, uh, I think he's working into his velocity right now. He's got a good delivery. Uh, the knuckle curve is, is so much of a field pitch um, that I'm sure as we get through spring into the season, you'll probably see a sharper pitch with uh, better uh, ability to throw for a strike when he wants to. So. Now when you when you got that kind of thing going like right there, you know, the curve, that's just the first pitch he's trying to throw, get me over strike. Uh, as opposed to that pitch with two strikes, you're more, more than likely going to see it in the dirt. But this is something he has to feel his way through camp with because it is such a field pitch. Jose Molina giving him a low target, and there it was. The location was middle of the plate, but it was down in the strike zone. Yeah. Hey Joe, I got an important question for you. Yeah. In this game of failure. I mean, you're failing a lot. Right. How, and you're an enthusiastic coach, you were in the minors, now you still are at this major league level. Tell the people and the kids out there how important it is to have an upbeat attitude, how to ha show enthusiasm, and how to be, be able to have the ability to encourage one another, to encourage a teammate, to encourage, you know, one of your players. How important is that? Well, it's very important because just think about it, when you're not going well, how important it is for somebody to come up to you to pick uh, to pick you up. I, I think that's the best way to uh, get the point across. Uh, for me, uh, you know, there's so many times we, we've all been through it that things aren't going well, and if somebody comes along and says the right thing to you, all of a sudden, boom, your mood changes and you get back into the swing of things. Uh, as I said, it's uh, being negative, I just don't get that concept whatsoever. And uh, when, particularly when you're involved in a group environment like we are in a team, or whether it's your family, whatever, uh, I just don't understand not being positive. So. Uh, you're absolutely right. Enthusiasm uh, makes an entire difference about the situation. It makes a, a difference about your attitude, your mood. And when that is affected in a positive way, all of a sudden the performance becomes better. And uh, it's, not, it's not difficult to figure out. Base hit by Eric Karras into right field. Phil Hyatt races to third, and Chicago has the tying runs on in the ninth. Hey, Chili fans, now you can get Wiener Schnitzel's famous Chili Cheese Dog, Chili Cheeseburger, and Chili Cheese Fries, all for just $3. What a deal. It's a $3 Chili Lover's Special only at Wiener Schnitzel, my son's favorite restaurant. Joe Madden eats there, too. Hey, Hot, it's just like you, though. I mean, when you played here, I mean, I first came up, um, you know, as a major league coach, you're on that particular team, and your enthusiasm is very contagious throughout both on and off the field and uh, everybody always loved to have you on that particular ball club because of the way you are and how positive you are and um, if everybody just sits back and analyzes a little bit you always want to be around a person like that and uh, I think we have a lot of that on this particular club between the players on the field and the coaching staff and the front office people it's a very positive enthusiastic group. Now Tom Goodwin former All-American at Fresno State Karras back at first base as Benji Gill holding the runner and uh, Rex I'd like to take this time to send a special Angels hello to Aaron Bernacki of Fullerton. He's also a friend of our buddy Eric Kay. Doug Nickel against Tom Goodwin and the Chicago Cubs will go with a pinch runner Charles Gibson the Seattle Mariners last year. He's one of Lou Pinella's favorites where he would use him all over the diamond. Eric Carroll's who's missed several games had a good day. Two knocks, a ribby. He came off to a, a little ovation here at Tempe Diablo Stadium. They got some pretty good speed at first and at the plate right here, guys. 
Yeah, Gilman can run. He led the nation in stolen bases twice at Fresno State, hitting 260 last year with the Giants. Joe, I always liked Charles Gibson even when he was in Seattle. He's I a, do like him. He's got I, a good throwing arm. He can play third base. He can play anywhere out there, but speed separates a, 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 a good utility player from a great one. I agree with you. I mean, this guy here can play all over the field. And uh, the other thing is, is his hitting came on a little bit too over the last couple of years, but he can play, as you stated, any position on the infield and in the outfield. And he's a, he's a plus runner. He puts a lot of pressure on the defense right now. And we have to pay a little bit more uh, attention to him. Joe, do you still time the angel batters out of the batter's box? Yeah, I do. 90 feet to first base? Yeah, I still do that, HUD. Um, what I mean, are some of the premium times? Well, if you look at Ersti, Ersti is normally in the 4-1 range. Eck is always like 4-2 to 4-2-5, sometimes better. Uh, Devannon in right field can really go. I mean, in left field right now, Jeffrey can get down to at 4 flat. Uh, Julio Ramirez in center field right now. He's, he's a low flyer also. He's a 4-1, 4-2 guy. Amezaga, the same thing. Um, What's the average time? Average from the right side, a right-handed hitter in the major leagues is 4.3 seconds, and for a left-handed, it's 4.2. Then that, that clock begins at the moment the ball strikes the bat. You have to anticipate contact. Uh, contact occurs, the clock starts, and obviously when his foot hits the bag, it stops. So um, a part of that is, so a lot of that's based on uh, double play time in regard to turning an average double play. Uh, for a guy's right hand, you want to be able to beat 4.3, and if he's left hand, you want to beat 4.2 in regard to uh, throwing the ball to second and back to first. Doug Nickel trying to get Tom Goodwin at home plate. He's concerned that Gibson might be going at first base. Joe, what's the fastest you've ever timed a player from the right side? From the right side, um, that's very easy. He's sitting right next to you right yep. now. That, that's the uh, the all-time Angel Land speed record uh, with, <laughs> without employing a, a combustion engine, and that was HUD. <laughs> And I think it was uh, something like 3-8 something. It went, and gosh, the guy was almost 50 years old at the time. Off Nichols' glove. No play. Everybody safe. It's a 4-3 ball game. So, Joe, we're on the subject of speed, and speed kills. I mean, in the games, it's no different. And Tom Goodwin possesses the wheels. One hopper, he planks it off of his glove. He couldn't quite find the handle. And by the time he finds the handle, it's too late. Well, you were gonna, you asked me who's the fastest riding. I just told you the fastest left-handed time I've ever got was the guy that just ran the first base on a, on a button, Kansas City. I got three, four, five several years ago, and that's... You know, that's absolutely low flying when you go three, four, five to first. This guy could really, really go. When that ball glanced off the glove of Doug Nickel, you knew Doug would have problems. So Mike Sosha will make a pitching change here in Tempe Diablo Stadium. We'll be right back. It's Toyota's Nationwide Spring Sales Event, where value begins with quality Toyota cars, trucks, and SUVs. Get $1,000 cash back on an 03 Camry, America's best-selling car. There's even $1,000 cash back on the 03 Highlander, $750 back on the 03 Solara, and an incredible $2,000 cash back on all 03 Sienna vans. Hurry, get to Toyota's Nationwide Spring Sales Event, where value begins with quality. Get the show on. Let's start with you, Jennifer. There is no communication. Mm -hmm. None. Mm -hmm. He just sits there like a lump watching the satellite TV. How many channels? Do it a lot. I mean, there's like two just for volleyball. Surround? Oh, yeah. Flat screen? Plasma. 43-inch huh. high def. Extended viewing angle. Oh, yeah. yeah. You can see it from the bathroom if you leave the door open. Sweet. You know what you need to do? What? You need... Oh, how big is your woofer? Like 18 inches. God, that's a big woofer. They did a great job pitching to me during the series. That situation, they had nowhere to put me, so he had to come to me. Here's the pitch to him. A line drive down the right field line! Garrett Anderson clears the bases! Yeah, I got the game winning hit, but we got the lead. Here's the pitch to Lofton. Everything went quiet, and just waiting for the ball to be caught. Erskine makes the catch! The Anaheim Angels are the champions of baseball! <laughs> Cloudy day in Tempe, Arizona. The Angels trying to hold on to a 4-3 lead over the Chicago Cubs. We're in the top of the ninth inning. Two on, one out, and the new pitcher for the Anaheim Angels is left-hander Dusty Bergman. 56 games last year in the minor leagues, a 6-1 record, 3-8 ERA. 
Joe. Yo. I have the pitches for him, fastball, curveball, split finger. How am I looking? Pretty good, and uh, the fastball, he kind of cuts in on righties pretty well. One of the strong points in regard, I mean, he, he's, he's tough on lefties. If you, if you examine his arm slot, his arm ang angle, he has a nice angle against lefties. And with that, he's able to cut the ball in on righty somewhat, too, so that makes him effective to both sides. So if we see this kid in the season, he'll be a, a situational left-handed pitcher. Yeah, but he has the ability to pitch through a righty, like I said, because of his ability to get inside on the mound. Uh, he has the weapons to go through. You're not going to let him go through a forceful right-hander, but uh, it's kind of a generic right-hander. You might let him go through him to get to another lefty. And there is speed on the base pass with Charles Gibson at second base, Tom Goodwin at first base. What kind of move does he have? I know Benji Gill's playing behind the well, runner, Joe. Well, you got the runner at second base to be concerned with right here. I mean, normally uh, the easier base, there you go, with a pickoff. And the center field. Gibson takes off. Goodwin goes to second base. Well, as beginning to say is with the left-handed pitcher, a base runner that can really run has an advantage in stealing third base because normally if the uh, lefty's not that quick to the plate, uh, he has his back toward the runner, and that's the easier base to steal. Right. Gibson's flat-footed, not expected to run there, but see the throw is up the line into the base runner's path. So in another way, that's what speed does. It puts pressure on guys. They It makes them a little bit nervous, and now here the Cubs are. In a four to three ball games, Angels still leading with one out, second and third. They're in the driver's seat. And the Angels will bring their infield in with Paul Bacco at the plate. Side ball one. A mess of the shortstop has terrific range, but now that is shortened as he's just off the edge of the infield grass. Scott Spezio at third, Adam Kennedy second. Benji Gill first base. Joe, explain why the infield is in to the people. Well, right now we're, we're playing it in, and part of that is, ba is based on the fact that it's a spring training game. Uh, you know, we're it's, it's four to three right here. You have runners in second and third. There's times we might play it back right here and concede a point and make it four four. But uh, we're just taking a chance right here. It just depends on the game situation in general. Um, like I said, sometimes we might play this one back right now. We chose to play it in. And that's one of the areas that Mike Sosha was saying we have to do a better job of. His quotes after yesterday's ball game, better job in situational things like advancing runners, right. pickoff plays. Yeah, we've we've been uh, we've been losing the battle of the inches so far in spring training. We work on all this stuff and we encourage them to do it in the games. Like that. Uh, nice. That's a good breaking ball right there. Okay, went around. Like the uh, the, the play we just tried, it was thrown away. Okay. Uh, some people might get upset about that and put runners in scoring position here to possibly put them ahead, but those are the kind of things you have to work on now. During the season, we do that correctly. All of a sudden, you get yourself out of the jam. So that, that truly is what spring training is for. Yeah. Two and a swing and a miss by Baco. That's a big second out. And Joe, I would imagine he has a little bit of a funky delivery that might be tough on lefties. Yeah, he creates a real good angle versus lefties. I'm sure you can see it better on your center field camera. Uh, the way he comes out, I've watched him in workouts, and I've stayed behind the catcher and watched it. He, he definitely presents a good angle. And um, also, I, I really, uh, from what I've been able to gather of Dusty since he's been here, he's, he's kind of a strong makeup guy, and I think he's pretty calm out there. Well, he'll have a tough out now as one of the best pinch hitters in the game Lenny Harris steps to the plate. He is one of the better pinch hitters in the game you're absolutely right. Joe you're doing one heck of a color commentating job this afternoon I got to tell you. But I've had a great teacher HUD. Oh <laughs> unbelievable you, you've been fantastic but one thing I got to give you one tip quit chomping your gum. I can hear it up here. Spit, you know what? Spit the gum out. All no, right? I stopped. I stopped chewing tobacco. Come on, give me a break. All right, then. You told me that I'll let you have the gum. It's in. either gum or uh, sunflower seeds. Keep the gum in, Joe. No, I'll put it down there like an old. <laughs> you're, the, chew. you're the man. We've, we've had great analysts in this game. David Eckstein was up here, and as soon as Jeff Devanin hit the ball, David just yells out, "It's gone." It was. I mean, you could tell by the sound of the bat yep. that thing was high and far. And that's what outfielders were listening for. Oh, absolutely. The sound, the sound off the bat can indicate where you got to go immediately. Looked at a play by Lenny Harris. Glad your microphones are that. One strike. 
How's your microphones that sensitive, man? Joe, in this you era, guys are uh, good. you ought to know in this technological Hunter world Bake. we're in, man. It's unbelievable. We don't miss a thing, and there's Bake. I don't deal with the sound side of it, though, Hud. I'm oh, impressed, Bert. man. So you're on it. You've been great today on KCAL 9. we got to get you a copy of this. Nice. There's a strike. Okay, okay. Now. Hud, what's he going to throw right here, Hud? Now, two and two. He come back with a heater. Lenny's going to be looking for the rainbow curve. Okay. I say he tries to sneak another one in. It'll surprise him. You want to bust him in right here? Come in off Not the a bad choice, man. Not a bad choice. Or just try to expand the pitch, expand the strike zone, see if it takes a breaking ball in the dirt. Nice hard fastball. Three and two. First base is open, but he's got the left hander up there. And the right hander on deck. Buddy Black would love to see him get him right here. We just Three, two count. You don't have to give in to him, either. like you said, with the base open, you don't have to give in, so he could still go ahead and try to make a pitch. Nice. Just barely got a piece on it. That's a good pitch. It is, and the thing about a veteran pinch hitter, Joe, as you know, right. they're up there battling you. And he he's been Lenny's been through many fires, he's been tested, and now the game's on the line for him here, so you're gonna see him shorten up his swing a little bit just to make some contact. Absolutely. And he is right now, I can see it from here. It's a good pitch again. Hub, he did just what we were talking about right there. He's choking up. He's just trying to protect the plate. He's more in a, a defensive posture right now. He's not out there very aggressive like he would be on the first pitch. Now he's, he's hooked him a couple times. I still would like to try to see him freeze him, maybe with a jam shot inside. Are you afraid to come in on him here, Joe? Well, not necessarily because he's not looking to just jerk the ball right now. Uh, he is in, there in, the, in the deep. He's in the choking poke mode right now. Boy, he is flipping everything foul that is too difficult to handle. This is classic pinch hitting work. This is good stuff. This is the kind of at bats we look for on our team. And you have to appreciate the toughness of Dusty Burton. He's making quality pitch after quality pitch. Yeah, he's got that base open, so he could he could do what he wants right here. And the fans are standing here in the land of the world champions. Joe, is it nice to feel the excitement here in spring training? Oh, it's great. It, um, it's really very, very uh, impressive. Uh, we kind of got used to it last year or during October, and, and it's, um, it definitely makes a difference. I'm going break the ball now. to right. It's gone. Stop. And it is a foul ball. Joe, I used to park my car right down there. I was there. just going to say that, huh? <laughs> Around the 360 <laughs> mark, and, and I, it, I got a couple dents in it. Somebody's going to uh, win windshield repair tomorrow after that one right there. Yeah, I learned early not to park out there by that wall. So you think he's going to go back outside? I, th I think he might go fastball right here. He's staying away. Yeah. Harris chops it behind the plate. Foul ball. Joe, you know, what Lenny Harris is doing now is one of the things we saw the Angels hitters do all last year. They, were, they never gave at bats away. They were so good at fighting pitches off. Can you tell the people what the advantage goes to the hitter when he keeps doing that to the well, pitcher? Yeah, the pitcher doesn't know where to throw the ball right now. He, he, he feels like he's tried everything possible. He's gone kitchen sink after him, and the guy's still hanging in with it. One of the concepts we like to put across is foul balls are good with two strikes. Ground ball to Mexico. They should do it. Well done. Great job, Great job by Dusty Bergman. With runners on second and third, he strikes out Paul Baco. Gets one of the top pinch hitters in the game to ground out to short. And the Joe. Angels win four to three. Joe Madden, thank you so much. Hey, thank you guys. It was an absolute pleasure working with some pros. You're the best. That's the Angels bench coach, Joe Madden. Mike Sosha liked the way he got quality pitching from Dusty Bergman for the win. Thank you. I could sit out here all afternoon. Ooh, look at that. I love watching the cars go by. Let's well, check this out. Ah, Mustang. Always hot, always cool. Ford Mustang. Now with 0% or $2,000 cash back, why watch the cars go by when you could be driving a Mustang? That's not just a car, that's an attitude. Fun starts at your Ford dealer.
Here in my country, we cherish the land. We protect it. We nourish it. And from the natural wonders of this land, we are able to create the most amazing wonder of all, the one you can taste. This is the pride of my country. This is Chilean fruit, ripe and delicious, harvested with care by us, the fruit farmers of Chile. Come to Vans and taste the natural wonders of Chile. Hi, I'm Jared Washburn with the Anaheim Angels. This summer, we're looking for every advantage we can get as the action heats up on the field. But off the field, we want to stay cool, save energy, and save money. And you can too. Here's how. Replace light bulbs with compact fluorescents, weather strip around windows and doors, and clean your air conditioner filters regularly. Remember, energy conservation is always in season. A message from the Anaheim Angels and Southern California Edison. Hi, I'm Benji Molina with the Anaheim Angels. This season, my teammates and I are putting all our energy out on the field. But off the field, we're doing our best to save energy. And here's what you can do to help conserve. Turn off lights and appliances when you're not using them. Keep your air conditioner at 78 degrees or use a fan instead. Remember, energy conservation is always in season. A message from the Anaheim Angels and Southern California Edison. Right now, fly Southwest Airlines from the LA area to Oakland or Phoenix for just $29 each way. So get packing. You are now free to move about the country. You were supposed to go to law school. You were supposed to work nine to five. You were supposed to get married and have 2.2 kids. Good thing you never did what you were supposed to. Around here, there's only one style, one attitude, one California, and one exclusive California truck, the Dodge Ram Bighorn Edition. It's loaded with four big doors, available 20-inch wheels, CD stereo, power windows, keyless entry, air, and much more. Plus, got your seven-year or 70,000-mile powertrain limited warranty. Grab the California Bighorn Ram now with either a $2,500 cash allowance or 0% financing. Only at California's Truck Stop, your nearby California Dodge dealer. Hey! World Champion Angels Baseball on KCAL 9 has been brought to you by Toyota. Get a great lease or low financing on any new 03 Toyota. See your Toyota dealer today. Get the feeling. Toyota. By the Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. By Southern California Edison, who reminds you that energy conservation is always in season. And by Wiener Schnitzel, the official hot dog of the Anaheim Angels. We're at Tempe Diablo Stadium. We're a packed house, a record crowd. Watch the Angels beat the Cubs four to three. Our Carl's Jr. superstar of the game, the Angels rookie pitcher, Chris Buchek, five shutout innings, four strikeouts. He had it working today. He was looking marvelous with that little two seam running, sinking fastball, staying out of the middle of the plate. Not overpowering, but has a promise for that fastball. Only one hit allowed, and now Chris Buchek joins us. Chris, tell us about your stuff today. What was working best for you? Uh, mainly my slider. Um, early on, I was just trying to keep the ball down and uh, minimize the damage and uh, you know, not, not give anybody free passes. And my control is a little off today with my fastball, but um, you know, I worked it out after the, after the game. I went down in the bullpen and threw a couple more pitches, and uh, you know, things seemed to uh, come around down there for me. Chris, it's going to be tough to make this starting rotation right here as they're world champions. It's already set. What are some of your goals now for the rest of spring training and on into the season? I think just uh, get a bond with a lot of the players. And, uh, you know, when it's my turn to come up, um, hopefully they'll have the confidence in me that, you know, that they showed in, uh, in Lackey and some of the younger players that made an impact for them. And, you know, each time out here, I, I just want to get better each time. And, and uh, iron things out, and no, no matter where I am, I you know I want to have a strong start, 
and uh, you know, working on my fundamentals here is, I think that's a big key for me. And what are the pitches that you have been working on trying to improve from last year to this? I think uh, just mixing everything up and uh, working down in the zone and mixing a two-seam fastball here and there. Um, you know, last season I, I showed signs of it, uh, having a good one, but uh, just never got the feel for it. And uh, now getting the opportunity to throw more in the bullpens and, and in the games with such a good defense behind us, you know, it gives you more confidence to work on things during the course of a game. And um, So ma mainly my two-seam and, and command mixing in my changeup. Chris, congratulations today. A marvelous effort. One hit allowed, no runs, five shutout innings, and you continue to shine for the Angels. Good luck. Thank you. Chris Buchek, former first round pick for the Anaheim Angels, the winning pitcher for an outstanding performance today. Now fly Southwest Airlines from the LA area to Oakland or Phoenix for just $29 each way. So get packing. You are now free to move about the country. How could I have let your sorrow grow? Round and round my thoughts are all grow. But this world will keep on turning. Till I find my way back to you. The guacamole bacon six dollar burger. New at Carl's Jr. A record crowd at Tempe Diablo Stadium and so many of them dressed in their angel red enjoying a 4-3 Anaheim win over the Chicago Cubs. So for my partner the Wonder Dog Rex Hudler this is Steve Fiziok saying so long from Tempe Diablo Stadium where the final score was the Angels 4 the Cubs 3. Join us again Saturday March 29th as the Angels host the Dodgers as they close out their spring training schedule. Game time is 7 o'clock. Stay tuned for KCAL 9 News for the latest. Lakers and Bucks tonight at 5.30. Good night, everyone.